Conditions where I've been undersized, didn't stand a chance. I believed in myself. I did that back when I was playing rugby league. I was the smallest guy on the field playing the, the biggest position. I was a big underdog and people thought I didn't stand a chance. The bravery, the commitment, you know, the work ethic. I've been doing that my whole life. Again, I've always been undersized. I love being in them positions because I love uh, being able to really show myself and show, show people what I'm capable of. Good morning from Las Vegas, Nevada, everybody, where International Fight Week is in full swing and UFC 290 Volkanovski Rodriguez is one day away. If you are joining us for the very first time, buckle up because we're going to have some fun and along the way bring you every single fighter who is weighing in. This is a live look at the weigh-in stage. All 28 fighters set to weigh in over the next hour or so. Three of the top four fighters on the card are ready. Volkanovski, Pantoja, Rodriguez ready to weigh in. Welcome inside, everybody. And what an esteemed trio that we have here. Our first female UFC fight analyst in the modern era of the UFC. We have a former champ in Kamara Usman. We have a Hall of Famer in Daniel Cormier. No idea what I'm doing here. However, <laughs> however, I am the reigning weigh-in show. Unfortunately, oh, unfortunately, un you really did like undersell me there. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I, gotta go I, gotta go champ, champ I was a holder. champion. I was a double champion. You really did undersell me. Like, I was going to put you over for how well you did because before you were like, yo, yo, they were just firing people. And then the glad camera came on and you just turned it on. And then you undersell me. I can't even give you a compliment. Because, you dude, you undersell me. I was a champion. Hey. I was How's a double Hall of Famer. I'm trying yeah, to build up our guests. Come on, I'm sorry, but this is how I mean, it, it, it did kind of make me feel a little bad because the way he just right, threw out did former champs. I mean, that's crazy. This is the whole show. It's warmer. So it's so, it's so crazy. Oh, wow. yeah, this guy got into the Hall of Fame. I mean, he, dude. You know, you know what happens though? I mean, future Hall of Famer, but then I call you that, then somebody else is going to get mad. So it's, it's a no win for me, guys. You mean like Jim Miller? It's a no win. We have an incredible card. Uh, I mean, International Fight Week also, always mm. has great cards, but, but this one is going to be. This one is special. I mean, this one is absolutely stacked top to bottom. And I love that, I don't know, there's, there's some fights on this card. I think we're going to see a lot of finishes. I'll put it that way. Mm, but really? That main, I do. But that oh, main event, you promise? I'm dying to see. I do promise. I will I promise the people. Promise. Right. You, can have, you can have your interim belt back if, I, if I'm wrong. Kamara, no, when, when you look at this title fight main event here, um, what, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Because Yair's a, a wild card. I mean, Volk is, you know, one of one. But in the way he fights, so is Yair. That's exactly what I think. Because me and DC were talking about it in the back is, you know, when you get got a champion like Volkanovski, it's almost like a meat and potatoes guy. Like, you know he's going to come forward. He's mm -hmm. going to hit you with clean shots. He's not going to make too many mistakes. But when you got a wild card like Yair Rodriguez, the guy that's doing scissor kicks to your face, I mean, that's a wild card. And I think that's someone who could shock the world. You know, I, I love International Fight Week. I'll, I'll be honest. It's a big fight card. It's a big fight week. I have... Uh... You could have mentioned that, too. I've headlined this fight week on a number of occasions. Oh but uh, the reality is this. It's a fun weekend, but, boy, you work now. I just saw my man Kamaru Usman's schedule. It's crazy, but it's a great opportunity for great fights, but also a lot of time to interact with the fans, which you don't normally get. You get a lot of time to be around the fans. Everybody comes together. It's fun. I mean, hell, I even saw you, Helly. Helly walked through the hotel. Everybody like, oh, my God, Did damn, Helly, can I get a picture? It was the first time I ever seen somebody ask Helly for a picture, dog. <laughs> it was nuts. He couldn't stop talking about it. Man, you saw that? <laughs> you saw, you <laughs> saw that? Yes, it happened. And then Helly's like, did you see that Tomorrow. dude asking for a picture? Tomorrow. Don't believe a word out of his mouth. <laughs> but it is a great week, and everybody's doing a lot, right? Especially... Especially considering that we have added Power Slap to yeah, the that's, roster. That's power cool. Slap Let's free go. coming up live and free on Rumble tonight. But guess what we have for you at the end of the weigh in show? We have a very live 
Power Slap event on the Way In Show for the first time. Nate Bernard, Stevie Ray Payne, these guys are studs. Look like they're chiseled out of granite. A couple of former college football players making their Power Slap debuts wow. here on the Way In Show. Going to be fun. And you guys are going to be calling it with me, yeah, yeah. sitting alongside. It's going to be a good time. I would like to be the co-main event against you. Really? Cormier versus Headley before the main event of the power slap. If you used your left and I used my right, would it be more even? I would power slap the crap out of you, man. Have you seen this power? You do have some power. I tried to grab you in the back. <laughs> You're strong when you're under duress. I know. So did Sanko. You guys tried to team up on me. I did not appreciate it from either one of you. All right, we have a great card. Let's take a look at the early prelims. UFC 290 doors opening at 3 p.m. local time. Lightweights Kamala Kirk and Esteban Rivovex getting us going in the curtain jerker. Undefeated Bantamweight past prospect Cameron Simon facing Terrence Mitchell, who's okay. making his debut. Edgar Chirez also gets a tough draw in his de debut against... Japan's Tatsuro Tyra in the prelims. Going to be action-packed. Couple of top 15 light heavyweights. Jimmy Crute and Alonzo Menafield facing off again after they fought to a draw in UFC 284. Jack Della Maddalena looking to improve to 5-0 against the UFC, taking on Josiah Harrell, who's making his UFC debut on short notice. And how about the great Robbie Lawler? Uh, looking to go out on top in his retirement fight against Nico Price after being inducted into the Fight Wing Hall of Fame tonight. Main card, here we go. Highly touted prospect Bo Nickel kicking off the main card against Val Woodburn, who was slated to be on Contender Series this season, but gets the short notice call to fill in for the injured Treshawn Gore. Originally scheduled for UFC 285, top 15 lightweights Jalen Turner and Dan Hooker finally square off. Robert Whitaker hoping to secure a title shot if he can get by South African Drikas Duplessis. And in the co-main event, it's Moreno and Pantoja. A two-to-one favorite is Moreno despite having lost to Pantoja twice before. And in the main event, by the way, champ Alex Volkanovsky taking on the interim champ Yair Rodriguez. All right, let's bring in the voice of the UFC. John Anik is with us now. Uh, John, let's talk about this main event. Volk is looking relaxed and focused. And Yair bringing in some new training partners this time around. A little different for him. What can you tell us about that? Well, Ignacio Bahamundes providing some length and some different looks when it comes to the striking. Bilal Muhammad came late in camp to help with the wrestling. But you talk about focus and composure and confidence. Yair Rodriguez has all of that and then some. I don't think he's phased at all by the magnitude of this challenge. He understands that Alexander Volkanovsky might have the highest fight IQ in the game, might be the most well-rounded fighter on the roster. But Yair Rodriguez is undeterred. And as my dear friend and broadcast partner, Dominic Cruz, always says you guys sort of refer to this Yair is one of one there is no point of comparison for him on this entire roster and every time he fights he looks faster than the previous fight so I'm excited to see what he can do that plus 320 next to his name no longer available God, you look good. He looks like he's about to call the Kentucky Derby. What's going on? I, was just I, mean, I don't have any time to go change for my television obligations later today. I slept like three <laughs> hours after the Hall of Fame. We're on fumes already. One more sleep. <laughs> all right. All right. Good stuff, buddy. All right. Co-main, uh, Moreno Pantoja. We, we know how great the champ is. We have seen his evolution before our eyes. But is it fair to say that Pantoja is one of the most overlooked fighters, maybe from the casual, not the hardcore MMA fans out there that we've seen on the roster? Singularly might be the most underrated fighter on the roster. I would even take it a step further and suggest that he might be the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the UFC without a championship belt right now. 30 professional fights. He has never been finished. Five-tool player, supremely well-coached. To me, one of the key things in this fight is just... A-level coaches, Safe Saud, the general, in one corner, and, of course, Marcos Damata in the other corner. Pantoja has had a full year to prepare for this fight, to prepare for a guy that twice he has already beaten. He understands acutely that this is a different Brandon Moreno, both physically and certainly mentally in terms of his evolution. But uh, I'm excited to see what Pantoja can do with this opportunity because you're right, Dan. People have no idea how good this guy is. All right. Uh, perhaps a middleweight title eliminator fight between uh, Robert Whitaker and Drake is plus I can't find many people that are picking Dracus in this fight. Everybody thinks Whitaker's a much more skilled fighter and probably going to roll through him. But Dracus, obviously very confident, very dangerous as well. Did he share a potential path to victory with you in your fighter meetings? 
Yeah, and a lot of that stuff we do save for the broadcast. And, of course, Drake is Duplessis is right here. He might actually be the first man to weigh in here today. But I think he understands the challenge in front of him. And I think he understood that he needed to elevate the level of all of his skills to take on a guy like Robert Whitaker. But, you know, you talk so much about the intangibles, the mental game, the composure, the collectiveness. He has all of that. And when you look at his UFC strength of schedule, even though Robert Whitaker has beaten those guys, it's not schlubs here. Darren Till, Derek Brunson, those are significant scalps, so I think Duplessis is ready. Um, but obviously this is a Herculean challenge. To think about beating Robert Whitaker and then having to fight out of Sonya in nine weeks is is systematically insane as far as I comprehend it. But uh, I think Duplessis is going to surprise some people. We'll see. All right, John. Thanks, buddy. I, I, I strive to look like you do right now on a I mean, regular bro, basis. The pocket squares on. Perfect. Amen. It's perfect. Amen. I mean, dude, we all love John Anik, but dude, come no, on. No, I'm telling you, like, it's perfect. <laughs> I mean, we all like, love the John The collars bro. is tight. Everything. Look at you. Your, he's, your shirt's all rumpled. Hey, he's right, by, hey, he's right behind the curtain. Are you going to go kiss him on the mouth? I might. Because that's how you act. <laughs> I might. Give him a hug. <laughs> come on, man. Best this in the business crazy, right there. Um, all right, let's talk about this Whitaker uh, Duplessis fight. When you, I literally, I could not find a single current or former fighter that pick Dracus in this one, not primarily because of the respect that they have for Robert Whitaker. How do you see this going down? Yeah, I mean, that, that's warranted, you know, in his new form and after, you know, those couple of setbacks and coming back and kind of knocking guys off the way that he has been. I can see how people really say that, okay, Whitaker is going to roll right over him. But there's one thing about Duplessis is, is, is he's able to get in there and he's able to, it doesn't matter who it is, he's able to shock everybody. Like, when he went in there with Derek Brunson, I thought, okay, maybe Derek is going to be able to take him down, grapple him, kind of wear him out a little bit. But no, he was able to land that shot, and he was able to get him out of there. So I think that's one of the things about him is he's explosive, and he's really not afraid of this moment right now. He's not afraid of that moment. By the way, when John was talking just a moment ago, Duplessis was just staring at the scale. He is not going to be the first to win. It's going to be Alex Volkanovski as we are set to begin. I was thinking that whenever they said Drake is staring at the scale, I said, yeah, but they got three of the dudes fighting for belts there. Those guys are going first. And first you get the featherweight champion in the world, the number one pound pound fighter in the world, or at least he was until John Jones came back. Tremendous athlete, unbelievable fighter, so well-rounded and continues to evolve. This guy's desire to learn is second to none. 144 and a half, the official weight for Alexander Volkanovsky. And I believe that is why he continues to open the gap against the competition at 145 pounds. But one thing you need to watch for, Laura, underneath the belt on his right I eye, know. he said he has a the small cut. cut. Right? said there's nothing to worry about. But I wonder how right, early in the fight will that become a factor as he fights Jair Rodriguez. 100%. Flyweight contender taking part in his first UFC title fight, Alexandre Pantoja. <laughs> Here comes Pantoja to this scale. And uh, listen, this is a guy that's beaten, beaten Moreno twice before. Certainly has to be in the back of Moreno's mind. Uh, just the One psychology. Five championship weight for Alessandre Pantoja. Right on the nose, 125. Just the psychology, even though we know Moreno has evolved so much, knowing that you, be, you beat a guy not Our just once but twice and the way the he beat scale, him the, the second time, the way he beat him, that's you know that's, that's living UFC's somewhere in Brandon's mind. That's the thing there, Laura. I mean, he dominated Rodriguez. that second fight. Might not have finished him. He Here's dominated. Yair Rodriguez step into the scale. El Pantera. This dude, like Kamaru said, one of one. A guy that tries so many different things to surprise you. But I feel like in his last fight, winning the interim championship, he was much more clean and he was much more traditional in his approach and the battering... 145, the official weight for Yair Rodriguez. And there's nothing, there's no other word for his performance event. over his Josh official. Emmett than battering. Because mm -hmm. he battered him with body kicks and he separated and showed why he is one of the most dangerous guys there. The but it was the more traditional the approach yeah. I thought really helped. Main event, the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC flyweight Here's the champ, champ Brandon the Moreno. You know, the one thing that was Assassin interesting Dave to me Brandon is you kind of knew, Moreno. but you didn't know. These guys do not like each other. They're, they get annoyed with each other. It's uh, it, it's going to be a fun fight third time around. Yeah, yeah I, I believe so. I think um, when, you, when someone's beating you twice and you're the champion, it, it, it kind of takes a toll on you to where you carry that with you. 125, the official weight for Brandon Moreno. Moreno said that at <laughs> times, <laughs> hey, I told you was saying stuff like, you're afraid of me. He's like, no, you just annoy me. Yeah. Right? Like, you just annoy me. Well, he's great. the reason he got cut. 
Yeah. That was the fight that got Brandon Moreno well, because he got from out the Oh, absolutely. He looked like he That was not good in that, that second fight. He, which is more, even more amazing. Right, next to hit the that he's the in a prelim here. in the bantamweight division. So we are locked Cameron in, by the way, Simon. with the main event and the co-main event. First four on the scale. That's good news. What's up, guys? My name is Cameron MSP Simon, fighting out of Team CIT in Pretoria, South Africa. And Laura, I have a question for you. After the fight, I want some donuts. What is your favorite flavor of donuts? And Daniel Cormier, stop licking your lips. I know, I know you want one right now. Maybe you can weigh in. <laughs> I don't know why you saw me as the donut expert up here, but I do like a good donut. And I, I'm weird. I like the maple glazed ones. Nice chocolate. It's a plain chocolate. Fire shots. Yeah, he fire shots. Yeah. I like the kid, though. He ran up there. He's, he's good. Cameron or? Cameron. Yeah, he's 186, good. 186, like the official no, weight for Drake is Duplessis. For Duplessis, like, this is a guy that he's so, like, he's so, like, unorthodox that you don't think, like, this guy's not very good. He's really good because he gets guys to fight the way that he wants them to fight. He's been really fun to watch so far in his career. Jimmy Crute, this guy pretty fun to watch too, the 27-year-old from uh, Australia. Let's uh, listen for the wait here. Some new tattoos on Jimmy Crute. Looks good. Two oh five, the official wait for Jimmy Crute. Set for his rematch with Alonzo Menafield after they fought to a draw in February. Prepper with a new team. To the Combat one out of Victoria. UFC also spent Hall some of time Famer in and Thailand. the former UFC Preparing. middleweight champion, now number two ranked contender, Robert the Reaper Whitaker. You know what Robert Whitaker told me? You know what Robert Whitaker told me? He stopped drinking milk and then he his body looks like that. So I said, okay. I said, okay, Rob Whitaker, you promised the people that if we just stop drinking milk, we get to look like you. So don't drink milk, people. You want to look like Rob Whitaker. 185 and a half the official weight for, for Robert Whitaker. Whitaker. He, no, he said that one of the, we said you look real big. And he goes, well, I took the milk out of my coffee. I was like, man, if that's the difference you got to make. What about almond milk? Are we okay with that? Right, I don't know. I don't know. We have to ask him. That's in hot water. Really? Kamara, do you drink milk? I'm still. Because you definitely don't drink milk. I milk and almond. There comes Jasmine. I said that too. Haragi. Hey, guys, this young lady, since she got into the UFC, has been so fun. I remember calling her first fight in San Diego. So she has shown what the next level of MMA can be in female fighting. 115 and a half. 115 and a half. Howard. Now, for Haragi, I'm not saying she's the best in the world, but she shows at a young age, they are coming in better. The women are improving skill. before they get to the UFC. The skill level is higher, and she's a very exciting fighter and has a fun fight in front of her that could really be exciting. Against this shit, this young lady, Denise Gomes. I think I have, I think I have Denise too. So this is another lady that, in her UFC debut, she felt very disappointed. One fifteen and a half, the official weight for Denise Gomes. One fifteen for Denise. Now, guys, she felt very disappointed, but her second UFC fight, she had another young, highly talented right, prospect up, took her out. So she UFC said she learns from division. every interaction in there. And she continues to improve. From the Contender Series to her two UFC fights, she's been very active. Camilla Kirk, 12 and 5, riding a nine fight win streak. Um, I, nine, actually, nine fight first round finishes. This guy it doesn't like to go to decision. Five and a half, the official weight for Camuela Kirk. Camuela Kirk. Camuela. 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 Is that Camille. New Ink also? All right, next they, these guys all the have scale. so many tattoos. As he makes his UFC debut in the yeah. welterweight division, fresh. Josiah Harrell. Yeah, this is my boy right here. This is mine. My name is Josiah Harrell, fighting out of Columbus, Ohio. Hey, DC and Kamal, how important is it to have a good father figure in your life? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Josiah. You and I both know, right? Him and I share something. It's it's our uh, stepfathers. It's your father, right? But it's the most important thing. 170 and a half, the official weight for 170 Joe and a half. Harrell. Guys, having a father figure in your life to guide you, is it's unbelievable. And obviously, you went through some issues early with your dad to have him now, though, must mean so much. Absolutely. Right, I mean, next just to, set to, to have, look, morning, have a man around that you look up to, that lets you yep. know that, hey, UFC don't debut. make that mistake, don't make Terrence that mistake. Mitchell. It's instrumental, for sure. Terrence Mitchell, I like this. I like this kid. Yeah. 
I, I, I like this kid. I mean, it's, I think he's only had maybe one fight go to a decision, and that was the one that he didn't that went away from him. But besides that, 11 fight win streak and finishing them all in less than two rounds. I think this is an exciting prospect. 135, the official weight for Terrence Mitchell. <laughs> All right, Alex Volkanovsky, by the way, going to be joining us on set here in just a matter of moments. Volk has right, already weighed in, made weight, the as the have Robert division, Whitaker, Brandon Moreno, Drikas Duplessis, and Alexandre Pantoja. Here is the 25-year-old Brazilian, <laughs> Vitor Petrino, undefeated as a pro. Won his UFC debut back in March over... Anton Turcali. Six, the official weight for Vitor I'm Petrino. Blanking on Turcali's. Oh, the Pleasure Man. Anton, the Pleasure Man. The Pleasure Man. <laughs> the Pleasure Man. Another one of the uh, plethora right, next up, we welcome of contender the series. Favorite, ones. the number 12 ranked UFC lightweight contender competing live on pay per view, Dan the Hangman Hooker. Speaking of new ink, I mean, my goodness, Dan, Dan Hooker went a little. Went a little ham with the with the tattoos. Got the new hair. But listen, he is coming out here feeling like. A new fighter, and that last fight uh, against Claudio Pueyes. Official weight 155 and a half for Dan. 155 and a half. He looks sensational, and you you always have this feeling with Dan Hooker that he's just like right there <sighs> from getting that top right, tier consistency. To the stage, he gave me this great right he gave me this great answer the other day. I want to talk about it whenever we get UFC to his fight. Yeah. Division. But just about oh, how he spoke about yeah. him, like having to retire and everything. Here's Bo Nichols stepping to the stage. Man, it was crazy when you saw um, on Embedded when he found out that he wasn't yeah. going to have the fight. He was just devastated. And, of course, they... 186, the official weight for Bo Nickel. 186. One thing I like about Bo is, uh, you know, being 4-0, he's, he's handling this very well. Mm -hmm. All this hype, all this hype, everything put on him, he's handling very well. And I think I actually saw right, him at the fighter, last Izzy fight. At mm -hmm. And I, uh, I, I, I was still Shirek. half unconscious from Izzy knocking out uh, Pereira. But I think I remember telling him, hey, just enjoy this. Just ride and enjoy this. And I think he's handling all of that very, very well. How about his short notice opponent, Val Woodburn, who was supposed to be on Contender Series, now fighting on the main card, walking up to the stage to watch yeah, Bo Nickel you. weigh in? We got Edgar. We got Edgar Shira is here making his UFC debut, and let me tell you something. This kid, this kid's good. One twenty-nine, the official weight for Edgar Didn't get the contract Shiret. in Contender Series, but he spent a lot of time training in Kansas City, and he. I rolled with him a number of times. He's one of those guys that does not give a shit if you're a girl. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> murder. Right, next up, we get the other half of that pay-per-view main He's very, card very opener, the middleweight Which I'm sure you appreciate. I did appreciate. That's I like that. Val Woodburn. Yo. What's up, Val Woodburn, fighting in Apopka, Florida. And I'm gonna, tomorrow I'm gonna show the world that the next big thing has arrived and somebody's always gotta go and they ain't gonna be mine. This kid, I tell you what, there, there is nothing about this moment that is intimidating Val Woodburn. And a half for Val I reached Woodburn. out to Phil Rowe, who trained with him for a very long time. He said, listen, Laura, you gotta understand, this man is violent. Not, and not only does he enjoy grappling, he invites the grappling. He's been trained with Jacare Souza and right, Adolfo Vieira for many, many years. Like, do not count that kid out. It, he's Arturo just living in the Tyra. moment, too. Yeah. I mean, again, he was supposed to be on Contender Series. Yep. At the weigh-ins, he was telling Volk that he was going to kill Yair. Yeah, Yair yeah. was standing like five feet behind Yeah, yeah. Him. Let me get to Tatsuro. <laughs> like, Tatsuro is just tremendous. He is one of... The funnest guys in prospects in this division. 130 pounds, the official weight for Tatsu. 130. Look, guys, this kid is so fun. He's won so many fights in a row. His grappling ability, you spoke about grappling. This dude has next level next grappling ability, in and he already has massive, division. massive Eight intentions for his career going forward. I'm sorry, Dan. I didn't mean to cut you off. You did. He was so rude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get to my guy. <laughs> these are the, admittedly, to these, are, these go really, work, really fast. Man. Speaking of which, hey, Sue Aguilar. Uh, listen, things did not go his way in his UFC debut, but this guy has a tremendous skill set. We saw him last year on Contender Series. The official weight for Jesus Aguilar. 126 Aguilar. for Jesus Aguilar. He reminds me a lot of Jimmy Rivera. He's really short for the weight class, but the way that he's able to just sort of like honey badger forward, get the takedown, nasty, nasty guillotine. All right, next so fighter to the stage competing in a light heavyweight prelim live on ABC and ESPN, Alonzo Menafield. Got Alonzo yeah. Menafield coming to the stage. Honestly, one of the uh, one of the most unassuming fighters that you'll ever meet, but a tremendous athlete. 
What we've got here. I think you just stole Kamaru's guy. I know. I was just, I, I mean, mean so self I No, I, no. They said go Laura, and I was like, I don't know. I'm not overly prepared to talk about Alonzo Menafield right now. Big, 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 the official weight for Alonzo <laughs> Menafield. Big Alonzo. One thing I, I, I like is is he's getting an opportunity for this rematch. You know, it was a wild fight that first time with Jimmy Crew. And now he's getting uh, he's getting the opportunity to be able to uh, to I mean, clean some of those things up and potentially go out there and get that win. The amount of people that weighed in already. I know that went very fast. impressive. Oh. Yeah, like there's so many people weighed in. You know what's yeah. crazy too? Is they up there flexing? I'm like, how y'all flexing? They flexing hard too. You'd be on the tired scale. when you make the scale. I'd be faking it. Every time I would walk to that scale, they would drag me to right at the edge. And then we would go. Oh, we know about you and the scale. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole segment. We, we, we've seen it. Indeed we do. Indeed we do. Let me, let me ask you guys about Alexander Volkanovsky. Mm -hmm. uh, already went in, already made weight. Um, hadn't lost in the UFC uh, prior to his last fight. And, of course, I mean, some people thought he won. Uh, obviously performed very well. But the, the era of invincibility that he had, was that dented after that loss or because... Uh, it, it was a different division. It was another champ. What, what, did that matter? I, I don't feel like it did. I don't think... I felt like he lost nothing. Because when they went into that fight, right, it was billed as the fight for the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Makachev wins, and he gets as 1B, right? They were both number one in the pound-for-pound -pound ranking. So he lost nothing because he fought so well. But the reality is this. For as many people as, that thought he won and the many people that thought he lost... When I talked to Alexander Volkanovsky and I asked him about it, he goes, guys, it was a very close fight. I could see where I might have won, where I might have won. Lost, sorry. He goes, but it was not a robbery. He goes, it was not a robbery. He goes, it was a very competitive fight, but I want to do it again. And in that statement, it tells me, this man is so much more mature than most. He's, I'm not going to live in what happened in the last one. Even if I do feel I got wrong, I'm going to move forward, get back to my weight class, defend my title, to put myself back in a position to do it again. Absolutely. I think it was a, it, it's a perfect thing that you want as a champion. If I'm the champion at, at a certain weight and I get a chance to be able to go up, get a big bag while I yeah. go up, and I, it's, it's him having fun. I didn't have to cut all that weight. I'm not defending this title and everything that comes with it. He had fun. He went out there and it showed because he looked a lot better than everyone was given, expecting him to do. 100%. I can't, I can't think of a fight where someone took a step, as big of a step forward in a loss, maybe a debut fighter that we are essentially given no chance whatsoever, but at that level, for a champion to step up, take a loss, but all of us are sitting around here talking about how awesome he did, how fantastic he did. I don't think any of us had as much of an appreciation for his defensive grappling, his offensive grappling, and of course, Islam striking as well. Well, I think that's the problem, right? I think that when you, we were talking about Makachev, he had looked so dominant that you really didn't expect anyone to be able to compete with him, especially with the way that he won the belt, the way that he was submitting people on the way up the ranks. And then you get Volkanovski, and he goes, yes, sure. He goes, maybe Islam is that guy. He said, because not everybody can do what I did. Let me see you do it, right? So it wasn't as much about maybe Islam isn't who he thought he was. Maybe Alexander is just better than anyone gave, us credit, gave him credit for. Because how could a guy who be ranked number one, pound for pound, be so expected to lose. Pound for pound means that your, your fighting style translates weight classes. He showed that. He showed that no matter where he fights, he's going to be competitive, Usman. Absolutely. I think it was that that when, when you say Alexander Volkanovsky, it's that, like I said earlier, that meat and potatoes. You know what you're going to get. But how many people turn down meat and potatoes any given day? You, I like steak. Hey, I'm going to eat meat and potatoes if I have <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah, else. Yeah. That's you my know. guy. But when you have a guy like Is, uh, Islam, that beat a guy like Charles Oliveira who has a lot of those wow moments, wow fights wow, where you yep. just, you know, so and then you look at Alexander Volkanovsky, you know, his fights are just clean meat and potatoes. He's going to get the job done. Yep. He's going to get the job done every time. So I think a lot of people weren't really giving him that much, you know. That's a great point. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, the wow. And not a ton of finishes. Not yeah. a ton of finishes. He doesn't finishes. have as many of those, yeah. oh my goodness, yeah. moments. But they're clean. Clean. They're clean. Dominant. Well, so let's just say he beats Yair. He's he's run through everybody, every top contender yeah. in the division, and he's talked about maybe Aljo, or obviously he wants another bite at Islam. What, what's what's next for him in the the division? Is Tapuria the only guy that that would kind of make sense there in the division? Tapuria. I mean, but if I'm being honest, I, I would I'd be dying to see that Islam fight this again. Fight. Not to mess up the whole lightweight division. I'm just talking about the fight I would want to see. But Ilya Tapuria. I mean, listen. 
Ilya Tapuria showed a tremendous skill set in his last fight. We all got very excited about mm -hmm. it. But the reason why we're maybe even more excited about Yair Rodriguez, because he brings that X factor mm -hmm. that we've seen Volkanovsky just destroy these guys with boxing skill sets, with wrestling skill sets, with jujitsu skill sets. That's why we're excited to talk about Yair, because it's something different. But I don't see Ilya Tapuria as being as different uh, a fighter as Yair is. But listen... He showed a lot in that last fight. Well, you, sure. you talked about the meat and potatoes. Maybe the reason styles make fights, right? Yair is not the meat no, well, and potatoes it. type guy. That's right? it, right? So, like, when you look at, and, and Volkanovski will say that. He goes, I will never downplay Taporia because I need something new. Mm -hmm. He wants something new. But the reality is, the focus is on this weekend because we always, and the only reason we talk about what's next is because he's been so dominant. Like, not many champions would be on the eve of a defense. And everybody's like, well, what's next? Like, yeah. maybe you got to worry about the now. But this guy's been so dominant that you're like, you're looking down the road. But he can't look down the road. The challenge in front of him this weekend is too great. That's for us to do. But we also need to live in the now. Yair Rodriguez is dangerous. Yair Rodriguez is going to push this guy in a way that I don't, he, he's him going into the Islam fight. Mm -hmm. It's the same exact thing. You take and you allow that to propel you into being ready because people don't give you a chance. So you go and do the unthinkable, just like he did against Islam, almost. Gary wants to do it. Well, and you mentioned it, pound for pound, the best fighter in the game until John Jones came back. And here's a look at the numbers, a 10-fight win streak at featherweight, the second longest in division history, 16-0 and 0 at featherweight with uh, seven finishes. I mean, we're, we're talking about eventually the, the featherweight goat. He is well on his way, and Alexander Volkanovsky is uh, joining us here on set. You've been wearing you've been wearing the Band-Aid all week. Is this something that we need to worry about, Alex? Yeah, nah, nothing to worry about. A little scratch, but uh, yeah, just thought I'd go the Nelly look as well, Nelly vibes, but yeah, it's a little, little scratch. It's all good. You, <laughs> you, you always have great game plans. You, as far as I know, stick to the game plans. By the way, I like the Raiders hat. Bro. Yeah, that's <laughs> that was nice. You. Is it, it. is it harder to game? I, did, I wore this just so he knows. He is anything, amazing, anything. bro. Like, I'm just <laughs> waiting for my question so because when, this uh, dude right here, man. When they take the championship, he knows I'm not on the bandwagon, you know? <laughs> there you go. There you go. I like but he it. reckons that ain't happening anytime soon. <laughs> anything no. to get under his skin, Alex, is, hey? is fantastic. Anything to bother yeah, that's him, it. Right? He's, just, uh, he's, he's not happy I'm a Raiders guy. I mean, sorry, uh, a Nuggets guy. So uh, just a little... Uh... I'm going to get to my question with the okay. champ. Yeah. Uh, all right, last one for me. Is it more difficult to to game plan for a guy like Yair since he is such a wild card? And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely is a <clears throat> different... Like, it's just unpredictable. <sighs> like, uh, it's a word everyone's using. And you have to with uh, someone like Yair Rodriguez. He is dangerous. He will throw things from all angles. And Oh, where is it over here? Is that the one? Oh, there you go. Uh, sorry. Uh, but he will do... Yeah, the... Crazy thing, it's still calculated, he is wild, but um, yeah, it's very unpredictable, but just bringing the right guys in to give you that look, uh, that's what's important for this camp. But, you know, I, I showed him the respect, because uh, he is a challenge. That was so I could prepare properly. Now, it's game time. I gave him enough respect in the, in the lead up. Now, I'm gonna show him why I'm the man and why I'm the king of my division. And, uh, I'm going to show you why I'm, I'm, the, I'm the king of uh, the featherweight division. A, good, a lot of energy right yeah. now, too. You know, after this weigh-in. That's why I was like, it's a bit early straight after the weigh-in. I'm like, look, hey. <laughs> trying to drink a little bit, but anyway, we here. Yeah, my, my, my question for you is that, you know, as a champion and, and winning and then defending your belt, you know, numerous times, you know, how do you feel about when, like when you come up to an event like this and everyone's already saying, hey, what's next for you? Mm. How does that make you feel? Uh, How do you deal with that? I think there's nothing wrong with it. Even I, and I'll, I'll be I'll be happy to talk about it. A lot of people, uh, you know, they will, you know, oh, you're looking past your opponent. You're not. Like I know I'm preparing how I need to. Anyone can watch how I train uh, and know that I'm preparing 100% for this guy. And I am happy to talk about it. That's no disrespect to the person in front of me. Um, and you guys know you aren't disrespecting your ear ever. Anyway, you're like we've defended, we've proved ourselves. And you are just saying, you know, what's next? And, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But, I mean, uh, again, I prepared how I needed to. Uh, and I expect to get my hand raised. And we'll see what's next. But, uh, yeah, there's a couple of names there. But, you know, we're getting real close now. So I'll uh, avoid the names uh, just now because I want to squash someone tomorrow. 
Alex, I don't feel like we've ever seen a champion who is this far into a dominant championship reign then go on to make tremendous, I want to say improvements, but just open up new levels to their game in the Holloway fight, in the Makachev fight. How are you able to maintain the mentality necessary to continue to add to your game when you're already being so dominant in this division? Now, I'm still so passionate about about MMA. Like, yeah. uh, I'm, uh, I've talked about it all week. I think I might have touched on it with uh, DC. Like, I still go into these sessions and I'm just locked in. I am breaking down every position and I still love it. You know, I'm boring my teammates with uh, how, how much detail I'm getting into it. That's how, how passionate I am about it. And, uh, and I, I train all year round. So even when uh, there is little hiccups or, you know, I've got to travel, do media obligations mid-camp, I can because I know I did the, week, uh, the work uh, previously. So being professional and disciplined all year round is has made me level up uh, through the year. So each camp I go, yeah, I'll, I'll focus on what's in front and the rest of the year I'm, I'm uh, obviously evolving. And then the passion and then the focus and the drive just adds on top of that. Champ, you know, you and I spoke the other day and, and boy, you don't like being a bandwagon jumper. You, but you don't think you and Jamal flying on a private plane is enough? You, did, was it necessary to send me the video, Champ? Oh, you know. Did you have to send me the video with you and Murray in the room? Uh, I, mean, I, thought, yeah, on, I, thought, I thought I had to. It was just like, oh, how's this? I was like, because uh, I think they might have seen the the video as well. Yeah. Like our chat. Oh, he goes, oh, he was giving you a bit of a flack about it. I go, how's that? Yeah, here you go. Like, yeah, let's show him. Let's show him what's up. I mean, Chad, you guys just go. He did you like that. He did me like that. Chad did me like that. On the jet tour. No, it, <laughs> it was even uh, live. I figure, I forget what broadcast it was, but you're watching the UFC. He's like, oh, he's a bandwagon jumper. <laughs> on, on live, on uh, live, I can't remember which uh, UFC. I was like, man, this bloke doesn't know. I was like, I, do I thought, uh, I thought John Anik would have my back because <laughs> I've chatted to him about it a fair bit because he uh, gave me a, uh, a Boston Celtics shirt and I'm like, oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. But I'm a Nuggets guy, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. The boys might, might be a bit, bit funny with this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then he, he, he didn't really... He goes, oh, yeah, he's a Nuggets guy. And he goes, ah. Oh. And then he didn't have my back. So I was like, hey, Nick, why didn't you have my back on that one? But... <laughs> I had to show you. I'm surprised you went on this show, to be I'll honest. I'll never question you again, Chad. <laughs> <champ. laughs> right. I understand Kamaru being a Nuggets fan. How, how did that come about? Uh, yeah. I was just saying, yeah. So, so you're, you're a Nuggets fan, yeah? Oh, yeah, nice. the Nuggets are my number number two team. Okay. okay but yeah. but they're they right there. Yeah. Oh, he he lived in Miami, one, though. Number so one like... is, no, nah, number one is Milwaukee. You know, <laughs> my brothers, <laughs> he, he Giannis and Thanasis. Those number one is sure. Milwaukee. Number two is, is Nuggets. Yeah. Because I, I do train in there. No, no, Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why he likes Nuggets, all right? What, what, what? Let, me, let, me you, let me tell you why. It's the craziest thing. And the Raiders. No matter where the UFC sends him, they, they treat him good. He's a lifelong fan. <laughs> he went to a Raiders Honestly, game. They took him on the field. Like, uh, I've, I've said it. Uh, I've, I've said it with, with everything now. I've found every... I think I've done every sport now. So, uh, yeah, so Nuggets. I met Jamal. He come over last year. and uh, Jamal Murray, up, the yeah, point Jamal, guard for the yeah, NBA yeah, Exactly, yeah. yeah. Jamal Murray come over and... We, we kicked it off, and I was like, that's it. Locked in, Nuggets guy, that, and committed. Uh, after the Ortega fight, I went to a Raiders game. We were like, had like this mad little uh, like booth right on the goal line and got a bit of the treatment. That's it. I'm a Raiders <laughs> guy, you know what I mean? And so I'm LA Kings guy they, and, and a Yankees guy. So uh, yeah. that's it. You want me on your side? Love. Give me the treatment. Yeah, that's my show boy right there. Show you love, show right? Love. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that Volkanovski, man. I like that bandwagon. It's a pretty simple philosophy, but it's brilliant at the same it really time. Is. Why would you not? Yeah, exactly. And, I get right. it. and then when you're the man, you get the treatment all the time. Yeah, well, that's true. And, That's and, it keeps me busy being loyal to so many people. <laughs> well, when you're the champ, the world is your kingdom. Oh, I appreciate it, champ. Thanks for it. coming Thank on. You, we really right. appreciate the time. I'm glad I could put a string a few words together right now. Get rehydrated, yeah. champ. Good yeah, luck. Cheers. great. Jack Della Maddalena is uh, stepping to the scale right now. Let's take a look at Jack Della Maddalena, one of the hottest prospects coming off of Dana White's Contender Series. Weighed in at 171 for Jack Della Maddalena. And the boxing on this guy, my goodness. The boxing on Jack Della Maddalena, 11 knockouts. I mean, he's been on tear in the UFC ever since he stepped foot here. We've got Brandon Royval making it to the scale as well. Yeah, he's weighing in as the backup for the co-main event, Sanko.
Yeah, another uh, Factory X product. He has one of the wildest styles. And when you look back at that fight, oh, I think we got the towel coming out. We're gonna bring out the uh, the box of shame here. We should just start the calling this the, uh, the DC, even though he didn't have the No, I didn't, towel. I didn't do that. It's why they made it. Well, it is why they made it. You guys are so crazy if you think that is why they made that. It's 100%. Let's see here. Dude, he's he's a pound overweight and he's got on underwear. He does yeah, not have fine. on a pound underwear. Oh, he'll be fine. Underwear don't he'll wear a pound. Okay. If, if they're wait, wet, they do. If they're wet with sweat. I'll bet you. I'll bet you. I'll bet you. How much? Yeah. Hundred bucks. It was hundred bucks. Hundred yeah. bucks. It was moving at one twenty six. So he wasn't one twenty six. Shaken. He, no, okay, so you still owe me hundred dollars, Lori. You still owe me hundred if he makes it. The sanctity of the weigh-in process is something DC <laughs> but, but, never uh, shines on. Oh, yes. no doubt. That's a great question. That, say it, say it. I don't it. understand that. Why don't we just go digital? Uh, yeah. Hey, you know you know that, that weigh-in with the towel? Yes. That was a digital scale. Maybe that's why we don't go digital. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. DC, DC no. 120, we're good. But but our producer just said that it was moving at 126, so he wasn't 126. All right, maybe it was 125 and a half. Yeah, he made so, it. yeah. So you uh, uh, RJ, RJ Clifford, the great. R.J. Clifford up here with us now. Um, let's talk. A couple Raider fans sitting in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. Two in a row. Yeah. You're both wearing Raiders hats. Too. Minus 2,000 favorite. Volkanovski. I decided. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Now, <laughs> now he's yeah. your guy. Un unbeatable. Okay. Number one pound for pound. I see how this works. Yeah. You guys are both very loyal people. Yeah. Um, top three UFC featherweights of all time. We talked about Volk, you know, moving up. And he could be considered the GOAT here in the very, very near future, although he's politely kind of deferred and said mm -hmm. it's not that time yet. But let's talk top three. Let's start with you, DC. Oh, my top three. Oh, yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> Alexander no Volkanovsky is third. I, I wow. do believe that. Third. I do believe that in time. Was he, he can, one first? What? Time, he can climb to number one all time. But he's still building a resume. I found out just the other day he's at title fight number five or number six, fifth defense. So it's not like he's ran all these defenses like all doing just yet. So I got Volkanovski at number three. At number two, I have Jose Aldo Jr. I think Jose Aldo, for what he did at WEC and in the UFC, puts him at number two. But at number one, I have the Hawaiian wonder boy, my boy Max Holloway. I think Max Holloway is the greatest featherweight of all time. Because here's the deal. And we had a big argument about this the other day. We got to stop having that revisionist history. When Max was the champion... Everybody proclaimed him the best of all time. He had his resume had exceeded Jose Aldo's. So you can't just now because but he's lost go and not say beat him three yes. Times, but but we're not just talking about just them. We're talking about resume in general, and we cannot just take it back because Max Holloway lost to Alexander Volkanovski. It's a piece. I think of Max it. is number one. Records are broken. Time changes. Yes, right. time changes. Yeah. But Volkanovski will pass him in time. Not Aldo because he had already passed Aldo. When Volkanovski passes Max Holloway, Aldo will go to three. I because love we had all already these guys the most yeah. list of Max Holloway, the number one guy. <laughs> I agree. I, I, and I guarantee RJ is not agreeing. <gasps> Your list is inverted. <laughs> is incorrect. Inverted. Max Holloway, number three. He has the best wins, but he has the worst losses. Yep. So often when we talk about pound for pound and best we, I, and where they're ranking, we look at oh, look all these great wins. You got to count the losses. He has the worst losses of those three. So why in the world during his title reign? Every one of us that was on television proclaimed we are we are hands down watching the greatest featherweight of all time. Because what we changes? don't have a crystal ball to but know when he loses to Volk three times. Yeah, but what changes though, right? He, he lost, lost to Volk. So is Volkanovski number one? Yes. yes. Aldo number two. Volk number one. Aldo. No, Aldo had. No, the list was most crazy. legendary, most yeah. holy shit moments. Aldo. Aldo. It's Aldo. Like the. the I almost changed my list last night watching him in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I was like, he's tearing up. I'm almost tearing up. It's Jose Aldo. Oh, this is but Volk is it's undefeated not. at 145 and handedly beat the other two. Simple he did not handedly wow. beat Max Holloway wow. two times. Did you watch the last fight? The last right, one, but the first two. The scale, one half of the feature. All right, back to the weigh-ins for a moment. ABC let's uh, let's halt this Nico's debate, even though it's a uh, very good price. one. This is Nico, the hybrid price. First fight of the year, kind of a mixed bag uh, from a record standpoint for Nico. Seven and six with a couple of no contests. Been wanting to face a big name, and he certainly gets it in Robbie Lawler in his retirement fight. 171, the official weight for Nico Price. Couldn't ask for a, a bigger fight, a bigger name, if you're Nico Price than having to face uh, Robbie Lawler. I, before we get before we get to Kamaru's list, I just want to say, 
Joe Montana was the greatest. He was the GOAT until Tom Brady. Came, yes. Right? That's yes. what happens. But like Volkanovski, another guy comes along, but, but, and then he's the guy. But is Volkanovski the guy right now? He's, yes. He even says, he's like, not yet. I'm not, not yet. I've got more to do before I'm the greatest featherweight of all time. I, I have, he says it himself. He says that in deference to Joe. Oh, Bell. my exactly. goodness. Uh, all right, Who tomorrow, he so we're going to get to my list. <laughs> and and honest, just really looking at all these guys and, and putting it all together <laughs> from what I remember, because that's the big thing is, People just go on what where they're at right now. Oh, yeah, Volkanovski's the best, he's the best, he's the best. He's great. I think right now on my list, he's number three. But he can climb to number yes, one. Yes, yes. He can. But right now, I've got him at number three. Watch his number two, I bet. Now, where my list at first from his is that I've got Holloway at number two. No, you don't. It's on your list right there. No, I... I Aldo Holloway. <laughs> this is you your can't list. No. This is your list. This is my list. list. No, this is my you list. You can't You can't change it. What? Oh, is he ah. changing that? No, that, it was an error. This dude's a error. liar. Because look, look, <laughs> boy, they, they, they... Why would they change? They... All right, so, 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 so I'm going to go... I'm going to go Holloway. I'm going to go Holloway at two. Very close to to Aldo. But... What I think a lot of people, especially now, they don't see and they don't seem to remember is how feared Jose Aldo was. Yes, he was. He was so... Yeah. I mean, this is a guy that was just going to beat you Two with just O's. one thing, a leg kick. He yeah. was going to finish you with a leg kick. Or if you wanted to stand and box, he didn't use any kicks. He was going to knock you out. And then you know who it, it, murdered you know. him? Was Alex Volkanovski. He didn't murder him. He, it was he, a good fight. He outstruck him 95 to 29. He outstruck him. It was a great fight. It was a great strike. He outstruck him 95 to 29. Didn't he beat Volkanovski? Volkanovski beat him for the interim title, didn't he? Was that? No, no, no. No, no, no that was no. that 135. I'm sorry. Number one contender. Yeah, it was no. okay. It was, but it he was outstruck him by a land. No, it wasn't. He outstruck him 95 to 29. I did Dude, my research. You cannot so got, just look at listen, the numbers. This is, but listen, this is the thing with, with, with Aldo. Aldo went from not just being dominant in WEC and beating up everybody. Comes to the UFC and just has the belt sitting on the but shelf. Dude, I let's have, think about. You can get that belt off of him. I but have every, so much they respect had to bring guys. But Jose Aldo has lost to. There are four featherweight champions. Jose, how long he was Jose lost, Aldo champion? I know, but listen, he has lost to the other three and not, well, not in about his now. prime. Yeah, you're talking about dude, now, listen, not in his prime. You're talking about yeah, now. But it no, was no, easier to have, long, to have longer streaks when Jose Aldo was in his prime prime. How can you say Jose Aldo easier. is not in his prime yeah. when he fought Volkanovski? Okay, and when he fought that Max Holloway. Yeah, but let me ask you this. If you're going to say that, then what how you, can you say... How, if you're going to say that, then the, a, a long thing with me is everyone was saying, oh, yeah, you're the best, you're the best, you're the best. I'm the best right now. I was right now. That, that was going to happen right now because exactly. then the moment you lost so that belt, G they were exactly. going to push it on the list. Exactly. Look we at GSP. Because we were talking. Kamaru Usman's the greatest welterweight of all time. Now that's just not a thought anymore. But look, I would never do that to you. Okay, I appreciate that, Laura. Let Laura give her list. let me give my list, all right? And it's going to be the opposite. I've got Max Holloway at number three, oh, respectfully. Tremendous fighter. He's top three all time, DC. I'm not disrespecting the man. Tremendous. But you've got Volkanovski, who beat him three times. And the last time that he beat him, it was clean. It was no crumbs. Jose Aldo, seven title defenses, yes. But he has been beaten by all three other champions and not at, like, the end of his career like a BJ Penn. Do you know how many rounds Alex Volkanovsky has lost in his entire featherweight career? No, I understand. Four. No, I four. understand he's great. Yeah, he, he's only lost He beat Max Holloway three times. He beat Jose oh Aldo 95 strikes These are great points, Laura. I'm not saying you're not making great points, but we cannot forget what points. Max Holloway was. That's the pro like, like Usman said, everybody wants to revisit stuff. We had this conversation in the fighter meeting the other day, and one guy that's very smart in fighting, really pays attention, got very upset because... We were talking about Anderson Silva. Oh, he's not the greatest anymore. It's it's just a... Well, that's it. Stop trying to make... The, uh, Derek. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got, the, I got the graphics guy doing power slap. Uh, he's a big guy. But, dude, I think this is a great conversation because I love greats of all time, but we do tend to forget that when what Max Holloway did to Aldo twice, what Max Holloway did against Brian Ortega, what Max Holloway did against all these dudes, everybody was like, and wow, so we are watching the greatest of all Ortega, time. And Volkanovski did that to Max three times. Dude, I don't and think... that's why I put Max ahead. I just, listen. Okay, I, I would say one thing right now that just kind of sets them off. You know, the other two, Holloway and Aldo, at the top is look at the, how the fights look at their, their their defenses the wow moments Holloway had the defenses I mean I he's talking he to you hey, for the record, doing this hey, for the with record. style I know. I know. Jose Aldo kicking your leg off with style and like I said we have to move on he is a meat and potatoes guy and I think in the end he can climb to number one for sure but right now 
I don't put him there yet. I yeah. am dying stop, on stop, this stop, mountain. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Hey, guys, we have to move on. But just for the record, and I want them to run this back in <laughs> later in the show, he just said, the one thing that makes me put Holloway up top. So his list didn't get changed. <laughs> He's trying to line up. right no, there. He, said, two. he literally <laughs> said, hey, the one thing I, that makes me put Holloway, Holloway on top. Holloway's my, I, li- I like Holloway. Said. Holloway's my guy. I like Holloway. Guys in the truck, clip Holloway. off his last little part. <laughs> you, know what's, you know what's happening, though? Like, the guys in the truck are dog cussing him because the, his list didn't match up with the graph like that's yeah, what he told us earlier like, no, he's lying no then he's why lying. would they why would they put max on his the and then holloway on mine the Come on. Probably... all right back to the weigh-ins uh marcin procneo stepping to the stage coming off that uh february unanimous decision over william knight yeah tremendous fight for marcin procneo i mean let's see what he weighs here the volume that this guy puts out is absolutely tremendous he looks good too. He looks well hydrated. Didn't hear the number there, but clearly made weight, had a smile on his face. Procneo never looks too drawn out. All right, here we go. The interim hey. champ, Yair Sorry, Rodriguez, is here. Thanks hey. for uh, joining us, my friend. Thank you for having me. Hello, Yair. How Hello. are you? Good, good to see, good you. see you. So, how's the, uh, how's the week been? Amazing. It's been an amazing week. Have you, uh, is there a fine line between in, enjoying a week like this and focusing on the task at hand? I mean, I think this is the most important week of all, right? Everything comes down to this week and how well you manage it. And uh, I have been doing a pretty good job with it. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, do you feel the difference though? Like in all of your fights to now, the difference, the uptick in the media, the uh, exposure that you're getting, like how are you dealing with all the extra that comes with main eventing a big time pay per view like this. <clears throat> I just think the, the sport itself is building you slowly up to the point where this becomes like normal. You know, the only difference in between before and today is that now that I have to do a little more media, which I'm not concerned about, it's part of the job that you have to do. You guys both know about it, and you know I like it. Yeah, do you feel like you can when you watch? Alexander Volkanovsky and all the praise that is heaped upon him. Do you feel like you can go out there and not only win this fight, but really impose yourself on him because of your style? You got massive physical advantages, taller, longer. You fight as a southpaw, which at times has caused him trouble. Do you feel like you can really dominate this fight? Yes, I think so. I believe so. Um, I, he's a lot shorter than me. I don't think um, that that's a huge uh, advantage, but of course it is in distance. And uh, if I'm as always, like able to manage my distance against a shorter guy like him, I think I'll I'll get the best results out of this fight. Yeah, see, now you've had a, uh, a lot of ups and you have some downs in your career. Mm-hmm. So how how satisfying is it for you to be at this moment right now, to know that all that ups and downs has still led you to this moment? And do you think that's what make is gonna make this moment a lot more sweeter for you? I think everybody goes uh, through ups and downs. I think it's just part of life. I always like have this example. Even in the in the heartbeat, it's, it's going up and down. It's not always like up. It's life, you know. It's like a roller coaster. It's normal. And uh, once you learn how to accept that, that life has ups and downs, and you accept everything that comes with it, and then you're free. You know, you're free to move uh, through life like a uh, bird, <laughs> and just keep on flying no matter where life takes you. And just learn from the bad and uh, bring out the best from every bad situation. And, uh, you know, it's going to feel good, as always, you know. But probably the taste of getting the victory after going through, like, hard times is even better. In your last fight, it felt like you, um, at least to the outside viewer, it felt like you unlocked a whole other level to your game. But we keep talking about how it felt much more calculated, I guess. And it's always been violent. Is that accurate or have we just been missing out on how much thought process goes into, you know, what we see as chaos? Are you fighting instinctually out there or are you out there, you know, with a plan, I guess is my question. I think what it has changed from the past to today is that before, sometimes I, I didn't listen that much to my corners, to like an strategy, I was more like free to go. And uh, sometimes when I listened, uh, the results were there. And when I didn't listen, um, my fights went to the negative uh, 
a negative position, negative situation, my losses in my in my career. But uh, I have been able to to listen to my co coaches and uh, teammates, and put together that and the ability of uh, changing during the fight. You know, through the situation that comes with the fight, like adjusting to each style that everybody has, and I think that's what led me to to be here. Do you, do you expect to see? the same Alex Volkanovsky that we've seen in his last featherweight fights, or do you expect a more grappling heavy approach from him because of your style? No, I just think, I think he's smart um, to fight, you know, and I think if you're smart enough and you're facing a guy like me, he wouldn't, he won't try to stand and bank with me. I'm much bigger than him, longer than him. I think he will try to push me to the cage, maybe take me down and hold me there. All right, Yair Rodriguez, the interim champion, a title unification bout. It is the main event of International Fight Week. Yair, thanks so much for joining us, man. Thank you, I appreciate really, uh, you. Really Thank you, it's a pleasure. Yair. It's an honor hey, to Yair. Yeah, yeah, always. You know somebody tried to tell me to call you Jair? No, Jair Rodriguez. I said, I'm not changing <laughs> this dude's name. How do you, in the, well, how you say your name? Yair, right? Yair, yes. With a Y. Yeah, with a Y. Yeah. Y-A-I-R, yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, Jair, Jair. Yeah, Yair. I'm yes. like, I'm not Yair. calling this dude Jair, yeah. man. Yair. <laughs> Or Changes Raciel. Huh? Raciel is my second, my what second name. Raciel. Yari <laughs> Graciel. Hey, yeah. Rodriguez. Yeah. El Pantera. El Pantera. El Pantera. El Pantera. Yes. <laughs> hey, holy smokes. Hey, if he gets the job done, I'm going to Mexico. <laughs> Fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> the By the way, Yair does his fight oh camp in Cabo. Thank you, brother. Like, oh part of the camp was God. in Cabo. Yeah, you That's guys are more than, more than welcome to come anytime you guys want. Well, I mean, that was, uh, Bilal uh, me was down there helping out? After this. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. We're definitely going to Mexico. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you, Yair, the, hey uh, the interim Bye. champ trying to become the champ if he can take out Alexander Volkanovsky. And what a ride it has been for Yair Rodriguez. Yair Rodriguez. Proudly repping Chihuahua, Mexico. Here is the number two ranked UFC featherweight contender, Yair Rodriguez. Back in 2014, Michael, he was 22 years of age when he debuted at UFC 180. This man is so much fun to watch. He is dynamic, he's explosive, and he can get the job done anywhere. I mean, the type of strikes that he throws, you just don't see them coming. The fight against the Korean zombie, one second left, and he pulls out an elbow. The way that he throws his kicks, the way that he spins, and there's no one else like him. Nearly 10 years later, Gaia Rodriguez fight for a piece of the time. First round, are you ready? Are you ready? Fight. Winner will get the featherweight champion, Alexander Volkanovsky, when he returns. Oh, crushing body kick for Rodriguez. Oh, Emmett clipped him with that right, though. And that's the thing, Emmett can just land one, and he's got you hurt. There's openings for Josh. The power is on Josh Emmett's side, but the speed and variation. Oh, and he attacks the body again. It's all Yair. Yair's just ferocious. Every time he throws, it's with everything that he has. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. He rarely hits the same thing twice. Yair's constantly attacking. Oh. Switch me, and it somehow ate it. Fierralo, fierralo. Good. On bar. And there's the triangle. My country means everything for me. En esta edición de campeones, nos encontramos con Jair Rodríguez, actual campeón interino. Es una figura de inspiración para muchos y sobre todo mexicanos que son tangos con su gente. No necesitas resiliencia. En los primeros tres meses del 2023. Hubo tres campeones mexicanos, Brando Moreno, Jair Rodríguez y Alexa Grasso. Somos esta primera generación de 100% mexicanos que finalmente se ve como el sueño hecho realidad aquí. Representing the country, putting your flag out there, you're proud of doing that. Yo les quiero decir muchas gracias por ser un ejemplo y una motivación para todos los mexicanos y latinos en este deporte. ¡Viva México! Just looking at my family and friends, you know, and seeing how happy they are about all the success that I have had in my career. It's amazing.
You can see uh, the Turkish delight Shannon Ross weighing in during that feature. He weighed in at 126 pounds, so he is good to go. We were just talking about this in terms of the popularity potentially of Yair Rodriguez if he were to become uh, a Mexican champ. Of course, he's uh, the interim champ right now, but so likable and, and just an incredibly popular figure in the country already would be you know, his, his status. He's, the, he's the total package. I mean, he's he's articulate. He's handsome. He's talented. He's got a really exciting fight style. He's got finishes. I mean, there's I, I, there's nothing that he lacks in terms of star potential. There, there, there's like a lot of things that goes into being like bigger than life. And he has it right. Good looking kid speaks English, but still with a heavy, heavy Mexican <laughs> accent. He's one of those guys that's very open. He's fun. He's young. He's engaging. He has it. And you know, we have seen many Mexican boxers become worldwide stars. Canelo Alvarez, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, so many. He could do that. Mm. Because it doesn't need to just stay within the boundaries of mixed martial arts because Yair Rodriguez has that thing. But he's got to win this one. Because to make you that big-time star... You got to go through that one moment. That, that one win. Yeah, you got to have that moment, you right? That, that makes your breakthrough. And I, I think this is it. If he's able to become the undisputed champion, oh, Mexico's going to be on fire. Bro, you know, you remember when, even when Connor won the belt, right? The interim title, you knew Connor was a star. Yes. But Connor, I don't know if he goes to that level if he doesn't knock out Aldo in the way that he did. No. No. This yeah. is his moment for Yair Rodriguez. All right. Um, He's one of the most exciting fighters in the game. So let's talk about the most exciting fighters in the game. Mm -hmm. We have our top five lists. Uh, help me with the order here, boys. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, let's go let's, Usman let's first. Let's start, let's start with our guest. Listen, DC. Producer DC. DC. Top. Yeah. Top. Mm. DC, there's a, there's, a, there's a host and there are analysts. My bad, bro. Okay? I, was, <laughs> I just thought you were, shuff <laughs> I thought you were, I thought you were shuffling papers, and I, I thought it came through to my ear first. So I'm like, yo, go ahead. He's a coach yeah. in life. Kamara, you're up. Oh, okay. Top five. Of course, we got to go with number one. I mean, yeah. Obviously. No brainer. No, no brainer. One. No brainer. Number one, my brother, Justin Gates. What's it like sparring with that guy? Is it just as crazy as the fight? Hey, I mean, we should probably sell that one day. We should put yeah. that on, you know, we should do a live stream and get everybody to pay five bucks and watch <laughs> me and him spar. It is incredible. I mean, um, the thing about Justin Gates that I think people still are. Uh, uh, very hyper focused on is how chaotic it is when you fight him inside. Mm. But people don't really see how systematic he is. I mean, him and Trevor are, are mastermind in breaking people down, and he goes out there and just makes it look, look? fantastic. What Why is he calling the highlight? Him? Don't make faces. What does that look? You know, I, I know he's your number one too. It's, it's just against you, of course. Yeah. I mean, he's everybody's <laughs> number one. That's what they say. He's your favorite fighter. It's favorite fight. Yep. Number two, I gotta go with Taporia. He's new, relatively new. But I watch him in the gym, and I got a chance to just move around with him a little bit. Watch him in the gym and how clean he is. He good, huh? His, oh, he good. He, he good. good. He I good. know he good. I, I can watch tell. him. Oh, man, put combinations he's on good. guys. I'm like, oh, damn, he's good. You know, so I'll put him at number two. Um, Poirier, I still put him at that top five. I mean, he's exciting. I can't wait for July 29th. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. come on. Don't no do this, man. We got to fight can't wait. tomorrow, man. You and then I'm going to throw... <laughs> I, I'm going to throw Rob Font in there. Rob Font, a little guy, but I just like Rob Font. Every time he gets out there to fight, he's willing to lay it down. His boxing is clean. He can kick. He can grapple as well. I'm going to throw him in that top five as well. Of course, my brother, Stop Bender. Is, it, is he just... <laughs> You're crazy. He's, 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 got, he's got a couple he's, stinkers. Hey, I'm he's got a couple. You get, he's not excited. Laura, 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 Laura. He's not excited. I, Laura, Laura. 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 Yeah, I tried to hold it. At his best, at his best, at his best, insane. Y'all, y'all, that's y'all disrespectful. You want to rewatch Jared Cannonier versus Izzy? This entire segment, yeah, yeah, right. Y'all are disrespectful. Laura, Laura, let me say this. Let me say this. Y'all disrespectful. Hey man, I'm gonna tell you, I loved to cheat when I was in school, but I would never cheat off him. Even though he was doing. DC spent the entire segment looking like he's smelling a fart. Let's see Nick Morris. Understand the assignment. What? First off, he went from one to five. Like, who goes from one to five? He's but supposed to start at five. Yeah, and then you build the worst. He over delivers. You would, no, you I had to explain myself. Because I knew y'all was going to act like this. So you no, you put the couple the dudes on there. You just like, let's let yeah. the big All right, man, you ready, man? <laughs> yeah. All right, Can't number, one, number five, man. Number five. Exciting, <laughs> exciting. Hamza Chumayev is number five.
him. He How? goes out there. He yeah. throws everybody down, even in the fight that he How could not. How is that exciting? Dude, that's so exciting. Him and Kevin Holland, for as long as it lasted, it was two dudes flying all around the ring. Yep. He was knocking everybody out. And even in the fight with Gilbert Burns, I where he couldn't do dominate, it was exciting. <laughs> it was exciting. I with my cousin when I was five. At number four, we're not talking about the most skilled, right? We're talking okay. about the most exciting. Okay. At number four, Fazeev. Fazeev. The dude's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Every fight is fun, exciting. If you on the edge of your seat at number three, Poirier, another guy that just yeah. has fun fights. You know it's going to be a slobber knocker like the good old JR used to say in wrestling when Poirier's out there. At number two, Justin Gaethje. Two? At num- they, let me two? Two? Wow. Gasp? Yeah, wow. Gasp for me. Gasp. Wow. Bla- you guys, Blasphemy. Hey, you guys. I are, wish I was wearing pearls. So they I take, them. Y'all taking the back? <laughs> yeah. Justin Gates is number two. What? what? Yes, he's number two. Okay, let's see her. Let's hear the number one. Because he's fun. But even in fun, there's a guy out there that's just as fun, but he gets the job done. You say Islam Makachev, I'm going to lose it. Charles Oliveira. Okay. What are we talking oh, about? Listen, Charlie the, Olive. I, I, he he said Islam. There is a champion who doesn't <laughs> hold the title, but his name is Charles Oliveira. Dude, look at what he did to <laughs> Benny Darius. Look at what he did yeah. to Poirier, yeah. Gaethje, and all these other dudes. Now, look, y'all all sitting back, all looking confused, because y'all know Charlie oh. Olive should be the most... Exciting guy on anybody, anybody's he, list. He is exciting. He's and by the way, how about four there. out? He's up there. How about he's four there. out of five on DC? They're all lightweight. Light light yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, it's a fun weight class, bro. Division, that, division, it, yeah. Your list could be bridge. Gaethje, Poirier, Oliveira, Chandler, like Ferguson. Like yeah. it, that. Not Ferguson. <laughs> Not this version. <laughs> <laughs> this version. <laughs> 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 years ago. Oh my God. I love you. I love you. Don't. Yeah. I'm gonna run through mine because I already know I'm gonna get crap for this. At number five, Yuri Prohashka, 23 first round. That's, I mean, yeah. that guy's exciting. Yair Rodriguez, <sighs> he's exciting to watch fight. Doesn't, listen, doesn't have tons and tons of finishes like Yuri, but how can you not describe his fighting style as exciting? He's it an is, exciting it is, fighter it to is, watch. It is. Charles Oliveira, number three, for the same reasons. I've got Shavkat at number oh two. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, this is going to make some We're noise. going back to that. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Because I like his fighting style so much. I bet you do. Yep. And then Justin Gaethje, number one. Yeah. As you should be. All right. I love that. Me? RJ? All right. Top five. Now, you got to remember, it's also you can't have stinkers. Like, your best is the best is something that's part of it, but you got to count when you don't look good. Jessica Andrade, number five. She's either getting nuked or nuking somebody. There is no in-between. It's a holy shit moment no matter where you go. I have never met a bigger Jessica Andrade fan. <laughs> I don't think you've met you a Jessica Andrade fan. I have to, are someone obsessed. has to love her. There's always someone a guy, has to love there's her always a guy that's like too her. smart. Obsessed. It's like too smart, I'm so smart. I'm like, it's like the underground guy. You remember that thing Picking, MMA yes, underground? MMA Picking underground. bitches up guys, and slamming them, choking them out. It's amazing. Yeah. He, thinks, Number, he thinks differently. What is, he's a what, next is your level belt, what is your belt color on the MMA underground? Yeah, he's on there. He's definitely I was actually a sure dog guy and I was close to black belt, I'm but sure then I got my were. fighter tag. Yeah, no, I was too. Uh, number four, Hamzat Shemaev. Not, not, a, not a boring 10 seconds of any mm-hmm. of his fights. Mm-hmm. Number three, Brandon Moreno. Again, no stinkers, all action all the time. Number two, Charles Oliveira, the most electrifying finisher in MMA history. And number one, Justin Gaethje. I feel bad for Justin Gaethje because he's never got to watch a Justin Gaethje fight live. <laughs> I agree. I feel like that's that's what a what a okay. terrible what life a to live. Sad life to Where you've live. never got to watch <laughs> Justin Gaethje him. fight. Correct. He's I mean, never been right. able to. His, Justin Gaethje's yeah. most boring fight, most boring fight, is a knockout of James Vick in like seventy seconds. That's his most boring I fight. Agree. Bro, and that was, a, that, was a, that was a performance of the huh. performance of the night, and it was, so, it was his most boring fight. That's how exciting. He all is. right, he's unbelievable. Uh, you guys, I hit on most of them. I have a couple of different ones here. I'll start at number five, Yair, for obvious reasons. Uh, my number four is Max Holloway. I'm surprised he didn't make anybody's list. I mean, we're talking what the greatest featherweight of all time on Don't your list, and he's not on most exciting. I mean, this is start. ridiculous. So Max Holloway's not on your list. No, I didn't. And by, I way, got and by the way, <laughs> super disrespectful to Max Holloway that he's not on your list. Mm. Sorry, but you're on mine. Uh, Michael Chandler I have at number three. To RJ's point, even when you lose, you go down swinging, and it's a firefight every single time that he's in the octagon. Conor McGregor is still on my list, even though he's not. Why do you laugh at everything? They laugh at anything you do that even even remotely smells like casual. Yeah, I get it, but when he walks walks into the building, it's exciting. When he's there for the week, it's exciting. Everything is exciting. Conor McGregor's number two, and then Justin Gaethje. 
is is my number one. So you There's, guys just like for the people I, who I, I don't got, have I Charles got, Oliveira is crazy. I got I got I, I got I got to come to something. Go ahead. I dropped the ball on this one. Yeah, you didn't yeah, know that exactly. time, dog. <laughs> you were very confused, <laughs> right? I was confused when I was like, what? What did you think it was? I think they put like two <laughs> questions in one. And so, uh, yeah, I, I dropped the ball. So who'd you, know, who'd you leave off? You know. Charles everybody. <laughs> everybody but Justin Gaethje. I was over there. I left off. Is that I mean, why you went from one to five? They just say exciting. Okay. It's, it's, it's hey, my, it's he's like, man, I like Ilya Tapori. And I'm yeah. like, yo, he good. But, yeah, I was so I confused mean, by that, too. I was, was like, mm, that's an interesting pick. Yeah, I mean. But, man, hey. I think it's maybe because I recently, I got to see him. Yeah. Oh, he good, yeah. though. And, and watch him. I just got, but I really got to know, right? Like. And this is what we in the comments, like we we can monitor it. Like, how could Charles Oliveira not be I agree. the most yeah. exciting and I, guy in the fight? He was on my list. Even all of us, like, even all of us, like when he was the champ, it was like, yo, this dude gets dropped every time, gets up and defends. Yeah. At some point, he's gonna lose. But boy, it's been so fun during the title run. He's number one, guys. One I'm eight, telling you. Eight, Watch eight, those comments. Let's look at those comments. All right, I admit, comments, I, admit, I dropped the ball. God, let's move on. Damn. I'm talking about Gage. No, but they all Gage's did Gage. Gage is not a bad oh, pick. Gage is number one. No, I don't think yeah. you're the one's a bad He's pick. He's no, arguing no, no, no. that Charles I, I stick with number one. I agree. Okay. Like, I, for sure. All right, all right let's guys, do this trivia. You want to do a little International Fight Week trivia? Yes, sir. By the way, guys, I, I, I appreciate it. DC's like producing this show. Like he's just he's directing us out here. I mean, he's just ready. He's taking us on. To the what they're telling me in my ear, like, dude, I, get I, on I, track. I, yeah. Uh, well, that's often that you hear that. All right. Who headlined last year's International Fight Week? Who headlined last year's International Fight Week? Oh, my pen doesn't work, guys. Sorry. Good. I, I'll just say my answer. Don't don't let really? him turn. Really? Really? Look, my pen's not working. We I need swear. a. Look, do, look. Can we get a pen? Why don't you use the green? The green will no, show. No, I can't up. do it. Well, you can't do it because that's a marker. No, it'll, wow. it'll come off. You can hold on. on. Wait, that's, that's, I think these boards. No, I know. These boards have had the meat anyway. <laughs> yeah, we might need we might need to upgrade the boards. You know my answer. Are you good, Kamara? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I think so. What? What? Your doesn't, doesn't say anything. It's dude. <laughs> a, he just handed you dude, a black marker. Dude. I got a dude. This See, is crazy. Now going cheat. Right, now I'm not. I, I, this one's out. Kamara, welcome no, I'm not going to cheat. I said Adesanya. No, I said It says Adesanya. And it says Adesanya. And who? Who, that says both. Adesanya, <laughs> <laughs> huh? Adesanya and who last year? Oh, that says Volk right there. So we get nobody other said the other. Adesanya guys. versus Cannoneer, man. Okay. Was well, it Cannoneer? It yeah, was it was Jared. It's my Dude, man, look at this though. Does this even show? Mine don't show. It barely shows. It, I can't see it. I can see it in person. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, share your. Right, nobody love, got the credit love, for that because they didn't I love get the whole fight. I love how honest fight. DC's being nowadays in life. Two so people make honest, up a fight. You did not start out of sign yet first. I kind of put Max and <laughs> all got it wrong. I thought it was Max Volk. All right, you guys ready? I'm ready. If I can get a black The epic fight between Robbie Lawler and Rory McDonald happened in International uh, Fight Week at UFC 189 in 2015. Can you name who headlined that card? Yes. Who headlined that card? Both fighters. It's not going to show. Try it. Try it. No, yeah. it won't show. It will not you show. You know the answer. Don't, come on. No, it the will pink, not show. The pink shows up, buddy. It won't show on the thing. The pink will show. You just don't know the answer. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me if you, you know, know the answer. What was the question? Hey, hey. No, 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 no. No. This can is we, trivia can we, can, here. can we keep this train rolling? Yeah. All right, was, let's flip them. Uh, Connor. Yeah, Connor. Connor and Connor, Mendez. Uh, Connor, Connor oh, Mendez. Mendez. Yeah, Kamara's winning. Dude. Yeah. One zippy zippy. I don't get half a point. Kamara Usman. Me. All right. Connor has headlined two international fight weeks in his career. UFC 189 against Chad Mendez. Kamara got that. Can you name the other opponent he headlines against or headlined against? So who else did Connor headline against in international fight week? Okay, he's flipped it already. I just had it. I just had the wrong one. No, it was... <laughs> Okay, all right, no. all right, okay. Kamaro. It is uh, incorrect, but it is Poirier. Yeah, it's yeah, Connor it's Poirier. Poirier. Is it? Yeah, it's Poirier. Um, <laughs> only one fighter on UFC 290 has headlined International Fight Week before. Can you name him? One fighter on this car on has this headlined car has headlined International Fight Week before. Which fighter is it? All right, flip them. Oh, oh. Okay, go, go ahead, Kamara. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nancy Lords, she get it? Yep, yeah. Whitaker. Okay, sorry. All right, DC knows a little something about International Fight Week. Uh, headlining, headlining against Stipe when he became the double champ back at UFC 226. How many fighters have won a second belt on International Fight Week? 
How many fighters have won a second belt at international fighting? So DC was one of them. How many guys have done that? It was only me, so nobody yeah, else. So that's I put right. nobody just else. Him. Correct. Yeah. So that's right. Trick that's question. all right. They tried to get us there. All right, Laura's winning. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, four, so it's one, though, right? Three, two. Yeah. It, it's semantics, but you guys. Tomorrow have has right. two. What do you mean? No. Who's two? Four, no. Four, you two. three. I got. Oh, three. four, three. Yeah. Two. You have two. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, okay, Jorge Masvidal's legendary flying knee knock out of Ben Askren happened at International Fight Week back in 2019. Who headlined that card? 2019. Mm. Oh, that's so It was a light heavyweight title fight. But that hand. moment was so big. Oh, yeah, I know. Everybody, everybody I know. just didn't think about it. Yeah, Guys, don't tell me. Don't, 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 uh, just relax. Let's see. When was it? What year? 2019. 2019, 2019 light heavyweight title fight. Okay. Oh. My marker's running out, too. I mean... Um, That's a weird one. Last hint for this one. Somebody okay. blew out their knee in that fight. Yeah, why did you do that? Um, why? Because you're winning and I'm trying to help them. Somebody blew it to... I have... Like, she got both. Wait, yeah. you got Tomorrow, both. you got to put Do both. We gotta, what? We got to put both? Yeah. My markers yeah, are just... Okay, so I get like a half, though, right? <laughs> All right, because obviously I clearly knew I'm who was. I'm bad, bro. No half, no... Oh, okay, we gave you we gave you the point. You got lucky here. Um, all right, Kamaro, you've also headlined in International Fight Week. Um, our first trip to Fight Island in Abu Dhabi, UFC 251, mm -hmm. where you beat Jorge Masvidal. But the question is, which future UFC champ made his debut on that card? Okay, debut. Which UFC champ, future at that time, made his debut on your card? In 2020? Not currently holding a belt. Two of, 251. Yep. Wow. He was a champ already? He had yep. the belt he, and he, he lost he, it. He, he, yes, he yes. became a champion. He's no longer the champion. Oh, oh my God. And he made his debut <laughs> on that card. Flip him. Yuri. Yuri. Got it. Oh, my God. He got, got it. it. Got it. Yeah, come on. I'm, got I'm it. getting smoked. DC, is, this, is, this is embarrassing. This is the worst one I've ever had. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Mario came to play. All right, UFC 200 back in 2016, one of the biggest nights in UFC history. What were the two title fights that took place that night? UFC 200, 2016. Two, final, two title fights that night. Can I give a hint, or is everybody good? Uh, you can give a hint if you want. You can give a hint. Okay, well, uh, one was guys, one was girls. Well, I know that. I got it, I got it. Okay. Three. Uh, wait. Oh, come on. All right. wait. Is it's not actually. I'm done. It is. What are we lot. doing? Yeah, exactly. We're like, what so are we doing? Excited. This is he a only ten second point. I'm trying to go. Go. I'm wrong. It's fine. All right, flip it. Nunez, Tate, Aldo, Edgar. I get only two there, right, guys? I get two because no, it was. I had no. Nunez, Tate. I should get two because it was, it was Edgar, Edgar and Aldo. Edgar. That was a title fight. Enter. All right, the same week oh. as UFC 200, there was a fight night with a title fight at the top of the card. Can you name who was uh, on the main event of that card? It was on a Thursday night, same week as UFC 200. There was a title fight. Who was the main event on that card? All right, and this set up, this set up one of the biggest fights in UFC history. The winner, this, the winner of the, the title fight fought one of the biggest. That fights wasn't in a UFC title history. fight. Yeah, it was. No idea. Empty. All right. Just empty. RDA against Eddie Alvarez. Just Alvarez empty. won the belt. Oh, yeah. Dang it. What the <laughs> hell? Somebody's hey, feeding him helping. answers, bro. Who is helping him? Hey. Somebody's feeding him answers. Him. Hey, you know Eddie's my brother. Come on. Now. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Joanna Gadelia was the next one. All right, you ready? Yeah. It is embarrassing for you. Like, you really pride yourself on this. I do. I do. I do. All right, six, 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 loser. Okay, last question. <laughs> Here we go. Which fighter has opened up the main card of the last two international fight weeks? Which fighter has opened up? Well, the somebody that's fighting this weekend. No, he's not on. Not this on this card. Don't uh, give him a hint. All right, he has a big fight coming. Up. Not on this card, but he has a big fight coming. Up. What? So he's been on the main card of the last two international fight weeks. Not on this card. Has a has a title fight coming up. 
think young, think fast rising. Why? Oh, Why? I know, I know. Why? Why? I know. Why? Why would you do that? Turn him. But trying to take it away. Oh, Mally! Let's, oh, let's go. Tiebreaker. 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 Wrestle. Let's get it. It's a tie. Let's wrestle. It's a tie. It's a tie. We don't, we don't do ties. We Guys, give him a tiebreaker. Okay, hold so, on, hold on, hold on. I'm hearing some some late breaking information, and I <laughs> oh I never God. expected this. No, you're lying. You're lying. I never don't expected this. this from one of the great <laughs> welterweights that we've ever seen. But he has a little DC in him. He has no, a little no, no, DC no. in him. He <laughs> may have been cheating. Oh! I think he cheats over. Oh, <laughs> what happened? No, wait. So what did he do? He can just wrote it down. Nothing happened. No, nothing happened. Nothing happened. No, I, I, you guys are just showing like he to him yeah, right yeah, yeah. now. Watch, 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 watch this. Watch this. Watch Kamara right here. <laughs> watch this. Look, look, look down. There it is. Look at the board. Look at the board. Hey, no. Thank God. The belt is yours. No. Hey, hey, Helen, did you see my board? My board was like this. I saw you. Hey, all you, all you guys in the truck, y'all are the ones in, in, in physics class that's telling the teacher oh my after goodness. who cheated. Yeah. They they the the one. difference between physics classes wow. is we have five cameras out here <laughs> wow. all wow. in on you. That's wow. so bad. Oh, I can't believe y'all did me like heavy. that. They dirtied you, dog. You'd I think I would be used up. to carrying this by now, but it's still ever, it's heavy. Well, you Every shouldn't have had it to start the show. We won hockey last time me and Ellie. only because I was gone and it was You forfeited your title. You forfeited your title. Big cheater over here. Yes. Cheater McCheaterson is yes. playing the belt. Here we go. All right, so Kamaro, we didn't introduce you to the Wheel of Shame, yeah. but you have to walk over there, spin the wheel, and then do whatever the, the wheel yeah. says. Okay. Then, then, wow. Walk of shame is what we wow. call it. Yeah. Oh, Wait, you see she's stuck, though. No, I don't. Because, I don't have to do that because I, they pick you. They pick you to do it. Don't right. spin it too hard. Don't use all your muscles. Use a little bit of them. There you go. Oh, uh, here we go. Just so you know, if you hadn't have cheated, this wouldn't All have right. Been you have to do an impersonation of one of the other people on the desk. <laughs> you have to oh, boy. <laughs> one of the other camera right there. You got to need some props. Do Laura, do Laura, do Laura. Or do Dan Helley. Talk like, talk like a white man. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, DC. How are you going to say something like that? You can't say something like that. It's not on national television. You can't say what is that? Uh, that's, hands, that's Dan Helley right there, the cowboy. <laughs> you don't really get to talk that's like that. You can't talk. You can't. You can't. It's kind of, <laughs> no, but you know I'm from Texas. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we got it down packed down there in Texas. We got it down packed. Uh, I mean, I guess I went to Tennessee, so at one point I may have talked like that. You know? Bro, every single time we do a show, you have to drop that you went to Tennessee. We know. It's true. Right, Laura? It's Isn't so it kind true. of a... Like, They're on the upswing right Ball now. Ball for Hey, guys. When's he going to start uh, talking about covering the NFL? In case, I mean, happen to. In case you haven't heard... Later today, live and free on Rumble, Power Slap 3 is coming up, and we have a huge, huge super heavyweight showdown. Check this out. Friday night, live and free on Rumble. It's the biggest game in sports when the Power Slap super heavyweights step on stage once again. Weighing in at almost 400 pounds, Uncle Micah is the newest Samoan warrior to enter the combat sports arena. And his opponent, slap fighting pioneer, the crazy Hawaiian, brings 405 pounds of Polynesian power to his promotional debut. It's a Pacific Rim rivalry for the ages, live from the ninth island of Las Vegas. Two of the best and biggest from the Aloha State, touched down on the Power Slap stage. Live and free on Rumble. All right, so that's coming up tonight, and then we are going to have a match right here on the weigh-in show coming up uh, in just a few minutes, so like 45 minutes or so. I believe. Are we? We're I mean, all going to be there. Are we almost done with the weigh-in show already? No, no, no. It's like four. We have an hour. We have an hour. We have time's three guys been, to wait. Time's been good. Are you getting tired? No, no, no. It's been great. <laughs> you look a little worn <laughs> down. Fun show. You look a little worn down. But you have some work to do here. This little game, Kamaro, we like to call you better. It's where you are essentially functioning <laughs> as a coach. You look directly into the camera, and you tell a specific fighter what they need to do. You better do this if you want to win on Saturday, okay? Let's start with the champ, Volkanovsky. And, DC, we begin with you. Alexander, you better get within the range of Yair Rodriguez. You cannot stay at range and allow this man 
to throw body kicks. And you better control the foot placement because if his foot is on the outside of yours, his right foot, he will dig kick after kick after kick. And stay aware when you're in the octagon tonight if you want to retain your championship. Alexander Volkanovsky, you better definitely control the range of this fight. Because that's what Yair is going to do. You no. can't use my stuff. No, you I can't just say you the went same first. Thing. No, you, you can't just first. say the same you thing went, that I just said. No, I didn't say the same thing. I said thing. control he's the range. Gotta, he's got to. You didn't say control the range. You said get. He's got to get on the inside. If he's Dude. able to get on the inside, then he can smother that kick. Listen, a kick is going to come at some point. Why give it's me? just hey, after you eat one. You have to understand that now I have to be able to smother just that Just because kid. he's stealing your no, shine a little gimmick. bit, you're that's just my gonna gimmick. pull the whistle out? That's listen, my gimmick. Okay. I okay. say what they but say. Listen, we're, we're both, okay, listen. At some point, we both got to the top. And so we can break down this. And this is pretty simple. Hey, for someone as skilled as Volkanovski, get on the inside. Don't let this guy kick you on the outside. I got a short whistle, man. I don't take shit out here. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. right. Where do you get this kind of insight? Whoever gave that man a whistle. Uh, all right. He gave him a whistle. I, <laughs> I know. Gave that that man a whistle. Or, 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 please take that back. Um, let's talk Yair Rodriguez. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Sanka, we'll start with you. Okay. Where's my camera? Yair Rodriguez, you better move laterally, my friend. You got to stay off the fence because Alex Volkanovsky is going to look to squeeze the range, put you on the fence eventually, and take this fight to the canvas where he will get that top pressure and he will try to suffocate the jujitsu game. You got to move. You got to keep at that kicking range. All right. Kamara, I wanted to get it. Brandon Moreno. Brandon Moreno. You better, first and foremost, those two fights are gone. You got to forget that. You are the undisputed champion now, and you've got to fight like that. No matter what this guy has said to you, no matter what he's done before, it does not matter. Right now, you got to go forward and you got to show him how improved you are, which I think he's improved in every facet of the game. And you've got to show that dominance and show him that you are the undisputed champion of the world. Alessandre Pantoja, DC. Pantoja, you better just remind him. Wait, what? <laughs> you can't start stealing no, what I bullshit. just said. You can't what? start stealing that exactly BS. what I just said. Who gave you that? Who needed to? <laughs> That's an air horn. First of all, flag on the play. You cannot start with what no, I just said. No, it's not the same thing. Pant no, because Pantoja's the other guy. Pantoja, you have to remind him that you're the guy that won both fights. And guess what? Regardless of how good Brandon Moreno is and how good he's gotten, there has to be memories of the past. You don't forget getting beat twice. You don't forget that second Way fight. Too long. Like, so you don't long. forget so that long. second fight where you got dominated. Been talking for Remind so him, Pantoja, that you're the man that owns him. Oh God. I'm glad your whistle broke. <laughs> All right, let's go, Robert. It. Let's go, Robert Whitaker, DC. Oh my God. This <laughs> Bobby Knuckles, you better get in his face and control the chaos. You got to make sure. He's not allowed to move around in the octagon free and just throw all those unorthodox strikes. Control the chaos. Drakus Duplessis, Sanko. Drakus Duplessis, first and foremost, you got to go out there and you got to believe. You got a mountain ahead of you, but you got to believe. And then you got to make this a messy, grindy, disgusting, I'll even say it, sloppy fight. Go yep, out yep. there and make this a gross fight mm -hmm. and just do your thing, man. It's good. Drakus Duplessis, you better not let this moment get too big for you. Can't let this moment get too big for you. You know, there's a lot being made. There's a lot being made of what's next. Oh, you fight is you easy. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot being made of that. You can't let this moment get too big for you because, because Robert Whitaker is that kind of guy that will humble you in a second. So he's got to stay present, go out there, and try to steal this one away from Robert Whitaker. All right, let's go back to the weigh-ins. I enjoyed all the uh, coaching advice, I gentlemen. Fine work there. Esteban Rebovic, the 27-year-old from Cordoba, Argentina, stepping to the stage. He, of course, is part of the curtain jerker against Camuela Kirk. And another one of the many Contender Series alum earned a contract after a first-round stoppage over Thomas Paul. And he likes to get to work early. Four wins in 90 seconds or less. And looks like we're going to be bringing out the curtain here for the Rebovix. Well, usually when a guy's last like that, starts to get to the tail end of the weigh-ins, they pushed it all the way as long as they could before they went out there. And this is the most uncomfortable feeling in the world.
when you're that close to weight, knowing you've pretty much left everything in the workout room or in the, in the sauna or in the tub. <laughs> All right, so 156 pounds. He did indeed make weights. All right, guys, got another little game for us. Uh, okay. It's called the red flag game. Listen. Okay. No, right, so no. This is Kylie Jenner uh, on social media on TikTok. It's a TikTok trend. Random flags are going to pop up. Okay. Right? And then uh, we're gonna kind of talk about them and see what they say if they're if they're ac oh Ooh. if they're accurate or not. And uh, I guess I guess I'm gonna go first uh, in the red flag game. I'm not really looking forward to this. Um, here are my red flags. One, two, three. Let's see what they say here. Doesn't tip well. Okay. I I actually that... tip pretty well. I actually tipped my Uber driver 25 percent the other day. Th Zach just said that you don't, by the way, and he's gonna. He's an ego maniac. <laughs> I do believe that. Coming from the biggest ego maniac at this table. Not entirely accurate. Oh, yeah, that's true. Constant I'm jealousy. No, I don't get that from you. I, yeah, I'm I not a very, not a very jealous guy. All right, let's look at let's look at DC. So All right, let me look at my red flags. We're gonna get crushed. This is some bull. This is gonna be some BS. I know that much because I'm I have no oh, red flags. Oh, obsessed with his phone. Okay. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. I haven't used it much today. So today you've been different. I guess so. Weird. Just relax. So you can't have, have obsessed it. with my it's phone. It's disconcerting. He bites, bites his nails. nails. No, I don't. But do I do have a pretty disgusting double nail going on right oh, now? Oh, weird. Yeah, yeah it's nasty. With the hammer. News my third one. It is forget that I do. Yeah, I do too. I That's forget people's names. So, hey, if you ever come into me and you go, and I'm like, what's up, baby? Yeah, I don't know your name. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you, like, baby. you do hey, that you with people stuff. you know too. Like, I do the people I know too. So, you know, it, I it see works. it's hard because everybody knows your name too. Mm. All right, Kamara. Okay. All right. Oh, here we go. Litters. Oh, Litters. Gosh. Oh, are you little? He's bro? a little bro. No. You are a little bro. No. You're a little bro. No, 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 I don't believe no. that about him. No, I'm too. I'm too uh, clean for that. Rule yeah. follower hates dogs. I you I, I, I <laughs> no. hate, hate, hate is, dogs. Oh, hate is a strong word. Hate okay. is a strong word. Ever since I I I lived with Rashad's dog for a long time, right. it changed. You're a flat earther. They're, no, they're, no, you're not. You're not. You're not like Kyrie. No. Okay. I mean, we have pictures. People have looked <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. <laughs> People look down and, and see the glow. It's a ball. Right. <laughs> oh, Sanko, oh, this is I'm gonna be nervous. good. Okay. Put Put absolutely, I do. And what? I that is disgusting. That's you ought to be delicious. ashamed of yourself. It is Ruins delicious. The you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'm not Laura. one bit ashamed what? of that. Awful. Bad, Bad driver. driver. I am. Listen, she can't I actually really got in an argument about. Yeah. This with my husband. Yeah. I am a phenomenal driver. I'm an expert. Oh, she does driver. that. I you do that I've third never... one. never. You do the third one. Yeah. You yes. Oh, yeah, when you do. do I I, you did it this morning. Dude, Lars feeling really good today. <laughs> you said that to me in the dressing room. Look. You said, you said, Lars feeling really good today. I'm gonna have, <laughs> Lars gonna have a great show. Laura never talks in third person. Yes, wow. you do. You do that to him. She goes, Lars gonna have a really good show today. I was like, who are we talking about? That was fun. It was. I thought they were actually kind of nice to us. I was way worried about that. That could have that could have gone a whole could've other level. Could have got ugly. I could have got ugly. Um, it could have been very bad. Uh, Mexico is making a stamp on the UFC. Uh, we could have three Mexican champions, full-time champions. Obviously, an interim champ, two champs right now. Take a look at this. Well, Mexico is as proud a fighting nation as there is in the world. I think all the Mexican people has that fire inside them. You know, we are warriors and we have that big heart and we don't like giving up. No matter how hard it is, no matter where position you are in the fight, we give it all. What a great heritage in combat sports Mexico has. Some of the baddest human beings to ever walk the face of the earth have come out of Mexico. They come and they bring it and they go toe to toe and they do not stop. But at the end of the day, that Mexican heart can make everything possible. And I'm here showing to the people, showing to my people, the new generations, we can do it, you know? It's... He's got it! Looks like it's has it! Brandon Moreno has done it! Tijuana, you have a champion! Like in history, I know that it's never easy. Got her back taken! I think oh, she got it! She, she got, got it! it. She, she got, got it! it. Mexico has been a huge focus for me for a very long time. And here we are in 23, and it's all just starting to align now. He tapped! Wow! Yair Rodriguez, UFC champion! We have three Mexican-born champions. To be the first female Mexican champion, born, raised, and trained in Mexico means the world to me. 
I want to put mixed martial arts in Mexico in another level. And I know I can open the doors for a lot of different athletes. I've been dreaming about this moment since I was a kid, you know. If I can say a message to the people, it's no matter what you do, be resilient and you can get to be anywhere you want to be. Se puede lograr, aquí estoy. ¡Viva México! How cool is that shot, that shot in Mexico sick. City? That, that was, was that was badass. All right, let's let's build a dream fight card, okay? All right. Using only Hispanic fighters, <clears throat> okay, primarily Mexico, I would imagine, and fighters from Australia and New Zealand. Um, let's start with Senko. All right, let's do it. I'm going to rip through these. This was actually harder than I thought it was going to be. It was not it was, easy. It was pretty tricky, so I'm going to have some interesting matchups. But you cannot have a card that is Oceania versus Latin America and not have Izzy at the top. And there is no one for Izzy to fight that is from right. Latin America. Right. So I'm bringing in Canelo Alvarez to fight Izzy. He walks at 185. We can make it work. <laughs> Co-main event, Volk versus Cejudo. That's an actual fight that I think everybody would love to see. Brandon Moreno versus Kai Kara France. I know they fought before, but it was a pretty close fight until the uh, the leg, or excuse me, the body kick. Toporia versus Hooker. How fun would that be? Jack Della Maddalena versus Michael Morales. If you don't know who Michael Morales is, you need to go look him up right now. This kid is insane. What he did the other week to uh, Max Griffin was wild. All right, Kamara, what do you have? Yeah, for me, I'm going to start the card off with Henry Cejudo taking on Kai Carl Front. I think that that's an amazing fight. I'm going to go with that to start the card. I'm going to go with Alexa Grosso, and I'm going to say, I'm going to give my girl Jessa, Jesse Rose Clark a shot. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I think she's a great stand-up Ooh. fighter. I'm going to give her a shot. I'm going to go with Marino versus Roy Val. I think that's a guy that's Amazing right now. Excellent. I think that would be an exciting Wait, isn't that fight. Latin America versus Latin America? Yeah, come on. Let's do it, bro. Hey, I couldn't find nobody else. In here. <laughs> it was hard. It was really hard. It was hard. It was hard. It was hard. hard. Don't blab. It was hard. I'm going to go with Volk and Yair because I haven't seen that fight yet. So I'm going to go with that as a uh, That seems like I a pretty I good idea. I wish I would have did that. I wish I would have did that. And then for the main event, I'm going to go with, I think, uh, probably top three, one of the most exciting middleweight fight we've ever seen. I'm going to go with Adesanya versus Gastelum. That's, oh, yeah. Two. Mm. That's I good. thought about that. Yeah. Good one, my guy. Only one was that, that two uh, I know. Hispanic I fighters against each other. But other than that, pretty good. <laughs> we'll let it pass. It's my turn. Yeah, go ahead. All right. I'm going to go Alexa Grasso versus Casey O'Neill. Mm -hmm. Right? Casey O'Neill is on the run. She's doing really well. Very exciting contender. I'm going to do Moreno versus Car France again. As they fought before, but like you said, didn't really matter. My third fight, I got to flip mine a little bit. They messed it up. I'm doing Adesanya versus Dominic Reyes. I'm giving Adesanya a fight at 205 just to get acclimated before he challenges again for the belt. Then I'm giving Cain Velasquez a retirement fight that's not Francis Ngannou, and I'll make him fight Tai Tuivasa. Could you it. imagine the fun there? And then last... I'm putting Canelo and Volkanovski oh, as the main event. Copycat. Because here's the deal. She said Canelo versus Adesanya. He fights 160. I read. I, I, mean, did, my, what, I did my research. Canelo fought at 160. He fought Bivol at 175. 175. 175. No, 170. is 145 Volkanovski, on, can, Volkanovski fights one, fought 155. Make him meet in the middle. 165, that's Canelo's ideal weight. That's a he real fight. Got jealous I, I brought up Canelo in the makeup and be like, oh, damn, that was a good idea. I should have Laura thinks that Canelo Alvarez is a good fighter. That's what you said. Was that, was that a late ad? <laughs> you said, you Laura remember? thinks Canelo Alvarez is a real fighter. All right, here are mine. Uh, I got uh, Rafa Garcia, Dan Hooker. Uh, That's a good one. Mm. How about an Ecuadorian, Michael Morales, against Jack Della Madalena? Morales, 3-0 and in the UFC. I think that could be a, I had the exact, a nice fight I had that among just uh, up-and-comers. I, I wasn't. Okay. I wasn't going to win. I'm sorry. Um, Casey O'Neill, Arena game. Aldana. Uh, O'Neill moves up for okay. a shot at... Uh, Fifth ranked Aldana. Uh, Kai Carr, France, Brandon Moreno, three trilogy fight. You know, Carr, France still looking for his first win there. And then uh, Volk and Tapuria would be my main event fight. Well done. Thank you. Nothing Pretty casual good. about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, what the fuck? What are y'all doing? <laughs> oh, Whoa, what up, Mick? <laughs> Doc, what's going on? Here's Mick. Mick, what's going on? You matchmaking? How did you stumble uh, onto the set, Why Mick? Why act like I'm doing your job? What the fuck do you think? It's a video game. Hey, bro, talk to Laura because she was the one that suggested what are you, this. What, what's going on here? It's right here, dog. I heard these right fights and they're fucking... Pretty questionable. Are they good fights? Who had, who, you can who get had, who had the best Mick Maynard? You can do. This is the man uh, 
Responsible for making a father's ashes. A man responsible for making that out of his These right. are the dream cards. Okay. Look right here. They're right, right. here. Okay, okay. Right. right? That was the top guy. Who made the out of Sonya Gaslam, right? Look. That was you. These oh, are yes. Like, and, that was when you. he was yes. a middleweight. When Gaslam yes. was a middleweight. Yes. He's not a middleweight. Yeah, you see? That's what I'm saying. Look at these fights. Tell me who's got the best dream card. Who put I could hear it in the back. It was a little scary. All right. DC cheated, by I the mean, way. I had the Canelo just give, idea. Go, go how, each one. Start with Sanko and just well, kind of tell us the how, the main how much does Canelo weigh? He walks at 185. No, no, no. He walks at 185. No, no, Mick. Canelo fights at 160. He walks at 185. Him and Izzy he would be phenomenal. He fights at 160. He's just mad he didn't think about it. He's fought at 47. I mean, I'd love to see it for Al's sake. I know. Because, he, you know, I think Izzy just destroys him. He's too small. He's small. He's... Doesn't not, I mean, it'd away. probably be over in two kicks. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. You can do a special rule kick, set. You can do a special rule set. No, so she's out. Well, so she's out. Okay. Let's move over so, to Joshua's so, so, card. She's, she's out. out. That was one and out. She's, she's out. out. That was that bad. <laughs> All right, okay, I, I like Bulk and uh, Cejudo. Yeah. I don't like Brandon and Kai. I think there's somebody, I think there's more people above Kai. You know, one day, yeah. you know, maybe mm -hmm. Kai's, Kai's definitely not But they had to be gone. They had to be they had to be oceanic or Hispanic. That was the hard yeah. part. Yeah, that was, that oh, was the toughest yeah. part. It was actually yeah, much more challenging. Well, it was really hard. It makes it a little more difficult. Because okay. there's no one. Um, okay, what Madeline, card do you like the best? That's the same with Madalena Morales, because I was back to the thing. Well, Madalena's kind of jumped in the rankings now. So let's, don't want to do that. Let's, let's, go over, let's go over to DC's card. Just kind of glance at DC's, Camaro's, mine. You looked at Senko's. And just, you know, who do you, who do you think has the best? That was a stretch. So you pull Re Reyes into the Latin American market. Ex yeah. Out of He's the Latin Mexican. American. He's Mexican. He wears a Mexican flag on his shorts. Yeah, they, they, it is both, a little bit of a Both these two top cards are disqualified. So just yeah. go ahead and go All down. All right, so <laughs> then go, yeah, move, move yeah, on look down. At these, these. I mean, and I heard you want to do Israel and Dominic at light heavyweight. There's got to be somebody we can do. <laughs> There's not. It's that's harder. why I had to that get. Makes that's it a little why more I had to bring in I was going to come in here and that's rip you guys up and make Canelo. these bullshit matchups. Uh, all right. So, so, so who do you, who do you like? <laughs> but, yeah, who do you like? Yeah. But it's, uh, they, they threw in a little caveat. Um, man, I'd love to see Alvarez of Volkanovski simply for the same reason. Volkanovski just takes him down and destroys him in 30 seconds. So that's the one you like, right? That's the card. I mean, just because it. We, all right. He, he hasn't even gotten to my card yet. We got to give him a chance. The producers are pushing me along, man. <laughs> okay. So, they want you on. to make a pick here. So where does Casey O'Neill come into this in terms? Of, uh, She's, I guess yes, okay, Australia. I was always yeah, thinking of her. Yeah, it's just Scottish. Australia and basic in Hispanic. Uh, so really that's what made it so difficult. I always think of her as um, of Scottish, but she is an Aussie. Um, okay, Dan. Well, that's, that's pretty damn that's good. A fun fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vulcan, he, he got a winner there, Vulcan in Tagoria. Um, I guess we're just you know Kai and Brandon is, a, is across the board because of the limitations, right? Yes. Right. Oh man, you got a Casey up a bantamweight. You see, that's yeah, a problem. Out, that's man, a real problem. He's out. It's television. You got to make a goddamn <laughs> pick here. Uh, make pick mine. I went out and got a deal done oh, with Canelo oh, Alvarez. Rough. I'm getting, oh, they took it away. Oh, yeah, it's over. They, 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 it's like, like the Grammys okay. whenever okay. you okay. speech okay. goes too I got to wrap it up? Yeah. I got, yeah. Speech is going oh. too long. They're playing that music on you. <laughs> he has got to be his. Okay, I got to <laughs> wrap it up. I feel a lot of pressure here. This is the good one. Especially, I got these guys next to me. I feel like I feel a little threatened. Yeah. Who do you think did the most research and thought? Definitely not DC. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, definitely oh, not. I'm going to lose a friend today. I mean, looking at some of your handiwork, you know, some of your best handiwork. I mean, Mick just refuses to pick. I mean, Mick I, 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 they took it away from me. Oh, okay. All right, let's here. pop this it back up here. There. He has 15 seconds He's got 15 to make seconds. This is, let's it's pop over. the graphic back Mick up Mick just refuses to we pick. We threw Mick in the fire. You know what? <laughs> I'm going with Dan's. Yeah! Oh, what? my goodness. Going with Dan. Man. It's the only one in front of you me. You wouldn't want to see your handiwork again. Oh. Well, the thing yes. is, I mean, that's a stretch. I mean, you listen, you're right. If Gaslam had stayed a middleweight, that was definitely something we were All thinking. Right. You know what? One day I that could be I'll call him tomorrow. Incredible. Eat a couple burritos. So, we back so up. The I don't think news, you'll have to ask him too hard. The good news, Mick, is you, <laughs> more than our viewing audience out there, can be a part of the matchmaking process. Take a look at this, Mick. Thanks for coming out, buddy. Appreciate it. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Dana White here. You think you got what it takes to put together a legendary UFC fight card? Well, here's your chance. Enter the UFC matchmaker sweepstakes presented by UFC Strike to become a matchmaker for the day and pitch me on the best fights to make. Plus, you and a friend will get two VIP tickets to attend our 30th anniversary event in New York City. Let's see what you got. Enter right now at UFC.com slash matchmaker and I will see you in the war room.
All right, just go to UFC.com slash matchmaker to take part. We talk about this all the time. These are some of the biggest debates for all the UFC fans out there. And now you can take part. Build your dream fight card for a chance to win at UFC.com slash matchmaker. You actually get to sit in on a matchmaking meeting, too. Did you know that? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Former UFC welterweight champion. Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler. Weighing in right now in his retirement fight. Man. What a legend. Everything Robbie's done in his career. I mean, it's, it's, there's so many moments of this guy that we just love. And every time he steps in there, you know what you're going to get from Robbie, which is utter chaos. 170 and a half, the official weight for the legend Robbie Lawler. And the thing about him, too, is that doesn't change. Yeah. That's him inside and outside the cage. Well, and, and, you know, we, we're, we're so big on lists. You know, I, I think just in life, not just here on the weigh-in show, we have the most exciting fighters. And, you know, in, had we asked this question what, six, seven years ago, Robbie Lawler's on that, on mm. that list. There's no doubt. I mean, yes, all time, really. probably on that list. Like, in the moment, you know, maybe not right now, but this, this guy has been unbelievable. What a remarkable career that, that Robbie Lawler has had. He's had a tremendous career. He's one of those guys that, You'll always remember. And that's honestly what you want to do this for. So when people are 10, 15 years down the line, you'll always pull back that Roy McDonald clip and go, hey, guys, if you haven't seen this, it may be a long time ago, but if you want to see heart, grit, determination mm -hmm. at the highest level, go watch this fight, Robbie Lawler, between Roy and McDonald. People would be surprised at the spirit that Robbie showed in there. It's tremendous. Unbelievable. Okay, guys. It's time for a little magic with right. Alexander Hello. the Great. We have had him on hey. the weigh-in show before. A little sleight of hand. He's been practicing magic for uh, years, since he was 13 years old. And you can check him out at alexandermagic.com or follow him at alexandermagic1 no, on out. Instagram give him some space. and Twitter. Uh, Always appreciate you being here with us. I'm sure you have something special cooked up, so I'll just turn it over to you right now. Great. It's, so it's 290. It's all about the card. So I, I thought I would do a card trick. Nice. Every magician has to do a card trick. I just happen to have a deck of cards. Mm -hmm. Now, what? I met these folks before. I'm this is the first time we've met. Okay. Yeah. So we, we couldn't have set anything up. Why do you seem so wary? <laughs> <laughs> he's moving away. <laughs> he's so I'm not going to take your watch. It's like he's going to get his palm like I'm, I'm, I'm watching Yeah, all right. I'm <laughs> on you. So, tomorrow, the full, full deck of 52 cards in a deck, right? Just call out any card. I placed a card <laughs> backwards hilarious. in this deck an hour ago when I came into the studio. Now, you don't know what card I put backwards. No. And I don't know what card you're going to say. No. <laughs> Just call it out. Say a card. Who's... To, today. What Two is of it? Hearts. What, what, what was that? Two of hearts. Two of hearts? Are you kidding? This is weird. I put one card backwards. Now, I'm going to go through the cards real slow. <laughs> and the camera nice can kind of come in here. You notice they're all facing the right direction. Oh, my God. Except no, no way. One, only one. That's the only backwards card. Kamaro, are you in on this? <laughs> we just met. No. Oh! <laughs> That's crazy. How? Are you, seriously, are you in on this? <laughs> oh. I don't, I, I, how? I don't know, I how know what's I, happening in, in Kamaru's happen? head right now. He looks mad. He looks confused. <laughs> There's some voodoo here. He looks like he wants to cross hey, hit him himself. Again, hit him again. Hit him again. No, nah, he won't get me again. He won't get me again. Ooh, he won't get me again. Oh, it's, okay. it's perfect. Perrier. Yeah. It's Perrier. Yeah. Yes, Perrier. Do a little trick with the Perrier belt. Dan, take a look at that. Make sure it's okay. And I've got a... Uh, these are common in Vegas. Half dollar, DC. Take a look at that. Make sure okay, it's good. Nothing, half dollar. nothing funny about it. It's, it's yep, good. That's it. That's a half dollar right now, there. Now, this is the question. Can you take that half dollar and uh, put it inside that bottle? Would, would that be possible? Hold oh, on. Ain't no way. Hey, ain't can, no way. can we just stop that for one minute? <laughs> this, this would be a lot better if we had a couple of beers. Can we get some Modellos? <laughs> for real. RJ, I'm surprised you haven't brought any up yet. There's no way that this fits in the bottle. No way. No, that can't Come on, can you fit this and in the bottle? And I tried to unscrew the bottom like I was looking. Yeah. No. You can't fit in the bottle. Right? There's no Did way that gets it on your head. No, if you had a dime, you could put it in, but put this it over is the possible. Yeah, it ain't going in. Nope. <laughs> He's trying, though. It's good. 
There's no way. <laughs> you can make it look like it's in, but it's not. And Dan, I'm gonna have you hold the end here. So just grab the bottle like this. Let me take this hand. Hold right here, squeeze, don't move. Watch the bottom right here. I'm not gonna push it through the top like most people would do. I'm gonna actually take this coin and push it right through. <laughs> Is it in there? Yes. The bottom. Oh! Yes. Oh! I need a drink. How do you do that? I need so a drink. Sweet. Yo, how do you do that? <laughs> you want to take it out? Alexander, can I see the bottle? Well, sure. I, I'm going to break it first. To get it out. Oh, no. No, you want to see the bottle. No problem. Let me just uh, just get that coin out of there. Hang on. There we go. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, actually, it looked better back in there. You want heads or tails, DC? This is unbelievable. I want tails. Tails never fails. One, two, three, tails. I got to figure this bottle thing out. This is pissing me off. The Baptist in me wants to rebuke the devil right now. <laughs> if you shake it, nothing happens. Some people think you can just shake it out. That never works. You got to get somebody really strong to smack the top. Dan, give it a give it a good smack right here. Just right here? Right here. Go. Look at that. Expert. That's the bottle. That's the coin. That's impossible. What? What is going on? You can check it. How do you do that? Look, it's an illusion. Can we just keep a camera on Kamara the entire time? <laughs> He's, He's lost right now. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know. Now, I don't know, dude. This is the way in show we talk about how these things work. So I shouldn't show you this, but <clears throat> you didn't unscrew the right direction. Oh. oh. How are you unscrewing it that Just fast? Just do it real fast and then back on. Just go ahead, show them how that comes right off. Get the, oh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you have a little trouble there. You can't get it off? No. There's no. It's, it's, it's made by Tylenol. Is it, no, <laughs> is it like have a child lock on it? Yeah. There's no line. All right, There's okay. none. Assembly. There's no seam. Exactly, Laura. No so that's, seam. That's why it seems like magic. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, here. There's a pen. Just uh, put a little, a little DH there. Yeah. yeah. Mark that. That's a Sharpie. But, yeah. um, when I was a kid, they called those magic markers. Okay? Yes, yes. I Let me show you that. why. You take a magic marker and uh, you put it in a bottle. Everybody watch the pen. Watch the pen. All you do is blow. <coughs> See, that's why they call them magic mm. markers. Mm -hmm. Do that again. <laughs> you ever use pens at work? <laughs> you'll never, you'll never like figure that. it out. Your brain's not big enough. I, I don't care how much you pretend to be smart. You will never figure it out. Uh, do you know? Have you figured no, it out? No, I have no idea. I'm Take far too guys. dumb to figure it out. I, I shouldn't tell you. If you folks, if you're standing behind me, you can see how a lot of this stuff works. But uh, Don't you. tell you, people. Yeah, I shouldn't say that. Let me cover that. We're gonna, like we're gift wrapping in here for a little souvenir. Now, I want you to keep one eye on the coin and one eye on the bottle and one eye on me. <laughs> you just got that joke. <laughs> You said tails before. Oh, can you flip that over for me? Have you ever heard of a... Flip it over? Yeah. There we go. Have you guys ever heard of a bottle that allows a coin to go inside? No, but we've seen it already. There's no such thing. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh, that one. Take a drink. <laughs> we recycle here, oh, right, no, at the no, UFC Apex? Mm -mm, mm -mm, that, mm -mm. that one got me. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, fun. Did you catch that one? That's the reaction I'm looking oh, for. That <laughs> that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is not come on, so well, I was trying to keep the beer in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Kamaru goes. Uh, that one got me. <laughs> now, as I, as I told you guys, if you were if you were standing behind me, you could see how it all works. So he looks okay, so it, scared. I, I, there's, I hear there's one more that you have for. So me. I'm going to show you how one works. Okay. No. Right, you, do you have to walk somewhere for that? Or yeah. I'm, bring out that big illusion. We're going to bring out one of the big ones. Okay. And I'm going to do it with my back to you, so you'll okay. see what the audience doesn't see. Oh, my God. And you'll figure out exactly how it works. I'm going to let you in on this. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm goodness. seriously going to let you in on this. All right. Are you, do you need to walk over there? Yeah, I'm going to go over there. So okay. you're going to watch it from right. my home. Well, well, you're walking over. You guys ready? You can catch uh, Alexander uh, next Friday and Saturday, July 14th and 15th at the Ahern Hotel. Um, he's not going to reveal any tricks, but uh, you're going to enjoy it. Jaw drop and stuff. Okay, we've got one more. Music. Okay, so I don't, I don't believe he's gonna talk. Okay, so to she's her. going in the box. <clears throat> oh my. Says shush. Okay. Oh, is she a contortionist? Oh no. That's what that is. Okay. I, I, that's that's scary, dude. Oh, no. 
I want no part of that. Oh, he's got bow skills. Oh, look, she's tired. Uh, okay. DC could not fit in that box. <laughs> wow. Getting a phone call. Oh, she makes a That's too tight. Senka, you could fit in that box. Maybe. We should just... Just crawl in there. Yeah. Oh, I love that she's on a... <clears throat> I think he wants you to get in the box, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, look how easy that was. Oh, she her. wanted him to cut <laughs> Can I have the... Give me the phone. <laughs> She'll call you back later. <laughs> you too, Mom. <laughs> Not now. Oh gosh. <sighs> okay. There's, there's, One, right, this, this is the tough thing. Two, three. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> what? Bro, bro. What the what? hell happened? Wait, wait, wait. What? Wait, wait. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. I don't Fiesta. know what happened. What are you doing in there? I was just on the no. air runner at the PI and I just fucking teleported. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, gals. Oh, what's, what's up? up? She not what's underneath. What's up, buddy? I swear to God, she's not just, underneath. I was just working out. Hey, thanks for the heads up on the tea time. Give me 20 minutes. Wow. <laughs> Helly, what's up, bro? Wow. Let me come around and give you the real thing. So that right is here. amazing. Where'd you come from? What, I, was the, I was on the air runner, Yo, bro. And next thing I know, I was like, I was in this box, dude. But where did he get in the box? Hold on. Champ? Hold on. What's up, my man? <laughs> Hold on. Laura, hey, where did you get in the box? Are you right next to him? With? Sure. I'll play rapid fire right. with you guys. Did you see it? Have I literally, I what? came right from did a workout here. I'm like sweaty. I was running. And I just fucking teleported, dude. This Next thing I'm like in this box. That is okay, crazy. Out. All right. Hey, Alexander <laughs> the Great. <laughs> AlexanderMagic.com or AlexanderMagic1 on Instagram. Well, I wish I could drink it, but and you know Twitter. what? I'll fucking smell it. He's got a fight, smell it. It smells delicious. All right. I'll have tomorrow drink it for me. Um, no. A little <laughs> rapid fire is coming up here. Kiesa, it's so good to see you, buddy. Good to see you guys. I saw you on Embedded. Who was who was punching you? Drickus. Uh, Duplissy. That's right. Thank God he took the steam off the punches. No, yeah, he did. All right. You're looking thin. Oh, I'm looking. Shredded. Come on, buddy. Come on. Fighting Kevin Holland. I should have like borrowed City. one of Kamaro's outfits. I came out with the red jacket. I got you. Know? Next time. <laughs> Shoot me a message. I got you. All right. Little rapid fire. You yeah. guys ready? Let's do it. Uh, you know how this works, Kiesa. It's, yeah. it's, it's quick. Buy or sell, Volk will use a grappling heavy attack against Yair Rodriguez. Not initially, but buy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Kamaro? Buy or sell. Buy. Okay. I buy. Yeah. He saw, he saw other people do it, right? He'll try to employ That's that right. strategy. All right. We talk a lot about uh, Mount Rushmore of MMA. An argument could be made that uh, Alexander Volkanovsky still the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, but to be an all-time great, you have to be one of the top four guys of all time. What is the path for Volk to be one of the top four greatest fighters of all time? He beats Yair. He goes up to lightweight, fights Islam again, beats Islam. Done. I'm on the same page as Laura. I mean, I think it's pretty clear cut. He's got to win a second title, and I don't see him making 135 pounds. So I think he rematches Islam. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's still freaked out from that <laughs> magic. He's still... But I'm still he, sweating from my workout. Not, why is second crack at that weight? Mm -hmm. Well, That's I mean, thing for me now. Now, if he's just brutally finishing everybody at featherweight, make a case for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's two paths, right? He can go up and fight Islam, or he can double-digit defenses. Mm -hmm. I think it that that does it also. Double-digit defenses at 145, he'll be like Demetrius Johnson. Like, that's what Agreed. got Demetrius Johnson on the list. Yeah. Yeah. One's quicker, one's yeah. One's quicker, quicker. one's yeah. That's, the, that's my pound for pound favorite fighter of all time. Best fighter of all time, Demetrius Johnson. DJ, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. He did it in one weight class. Does a Volkanovski loss tomorrow impact who is the greatest featherweight of all time? Somewhat, but I still think he's top three. Okay. Well, there's a, there only is a top three best featherweights of all well, time. It's four Max of them. Holloway, <laughs> Jose yeah. Aldo, and Volkanovski. I agree. You know, Hunter would argue with you. <laughs> at some point, all the greats have to come up short. At some point, they they have to take a loss, and that doesn't take away from where they've where their achievements have come. So I think that. Win or lose, I think Volkanovski is still in the conversation for best featherweight of all time. Okay. 
top three. <laughs> Plain and simple. <laughs> My, mine is this, though. Like, I don't think it changes anything because I still think he has work to do to be considered the best. So if he loses, if I don't have him as number one on, right now, still has work. it doesn't change anything, right? Okay. So I think Max Holloway is still the best, but he can <laughs> get there. Okay. But a loss doesn't really hurt him. All right, true or false, Yair is Volkanovsky, Volkanovsky's toughest test at 145. Toughest test that he's had? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to run through his resume right now. He's one of them, for sure. Yeah. I'm gonna he's, he's, he's one of one, like you said in the, in the opening, Kamar. He's such an interesting look. At featherweight, no. I think that Max Holloway is still the tougher fight. I mean, if you just go off MMA math alone, Max has a win over Yair Rodriguez. I think what Yair brings to the table, though, is something so different that Volkanovski hasn't seen. Yair is literally a one-of-one -one fighter. You don't know what to get. You can't really break down film on him mm -hmm. because he brings new wrinkles to his game every time he steps in the octagon. So it's not as tough as test, the but only it's reason, fresh as test. I completely agree. The only reason I, because I, I started to go down there, I was like, but then the way he beat him the last time, that just sticks in my in my mind. He made it look easy-ish. Easy a little side note, nice Canadian tuxedo. Thank you. I like it. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you for acknowledging. He, he, we need to get him back on the show more often. So it's a question, is he, is he the toughest or one of the toughest? No, is he the toughest the in toughest. the division right now? It, it's it's impossible. It, it, that's hard to say when you've got Max Holloway and how, how, how amazing Max Holloway was. So I, I wouldn't say he's the. Mm -hmm. I say he's one of the toughest. Still is. Toughest. Not not. Yes, still yes, is exactly. Yeah. Still is. So I, I would feel, say Max Holloway. I feel like the toughest challenge he'll ever have at 145 is probably that second Max Holloway fight. For sure. Yeah. Because Max Holloway was so prepared to beat him until he loses, right? Because like Mike said, at some point all the greats lose. The toughest fight he'll ever have is that second Max Holloway fight. Until someone ultimately beats him. Okay. Factor or non-factor, Pantoja's two previous wins over Brandon Moreno? That's a great question. I want to say no because of how much Brandon has grown, but I just, there's, it's small, but it lives, it lives in your head now, a little bit. Now I'm focused on your Canadian. Isn't it great? Yeah, it's Thank great. You. It's great. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. You know, I, most of the time, I would say they are a factor, but with Brandon Moreno, he's just such a different fighter. I mean, even the way he fights, you go look at the second fight with Pantoja, the punches look so labored. He's a different fighter. He brought a Nick Piccinini to address the wrestling. You think he would be rolling your eyes when I'm bringing up a, <laughs> you know, three-time All-American from Oklahoma State, some DC knows something about. But look, I, I, I want to say no. I think that this is a different Brandon Moreno, and I don't think that those previous fights are going to yeah. be a factor at all. I think a factor. Thank you. I think a factor because oh, when, you, when you beat a guy twice, and, and it wasn't just, okay, I was a striker, he was a grappler. Mm -hmm. and that's, it was everywhere. And I, I think it's a factor. I think uh, that's something Moreno has to be able to leave behind and get over. That boy's smart, man. It's a factor because you don't forget losing. It doesn't matter. And guess what? Brandon Moreno, for as different of a fighter as he is, he went back and watched that fight, even though it was all the way back in 18. And when you have, if you don't believe yourself that you are so different that you can't even go back and watch it in preparation, then you obviously, it is a factor. So yeah, he went back and watched it to prepare himself for Pantoja. Because guess what? Pantoja's different too. So you don't think you should watch your losses if you're rematching somebody? Five, if you're so different, and you're going to approach the fight so different. I'm not even the you, same fighter. You don't want to remind yourself? Not though, five like, years ago. You, you don't want to remind that, yourself? You don't want to look that, back on it and say, hey, he this is that, what I don't want to do. Yeah, this is what I'm and, not going to let happen. So I'm going to use said, that as motivation. Him and his coach said, okay. we went back and watched. And they, because we got to build a game plan to beat that specific guy. All you have is research. You're guessing when you've never fought somebody. You're taking what he did against someone else and trying to apply it to your fight. But, hey, you and Leon Edwards didn't fight for so long. Did you go back and watch the first fight? Like, when you built... Of course you did. Because even though you were different and he was different, there's still similarities of who you were at that point to fight. Of course. Do I have to say, with Pantoja, just the way he's walking around, you know, you said he was saying stuff up to Marino and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you, you're walking around with that confidence, that guy's a champion. And everybody that he fights, he knows, oh, that guy's a champion. I beat him twice. So when he goes in to fight all those other opponents, he's running through them because he knows. I'm coming for the champion. I know I beat him. Better comeback story. Brandon Moreno, Robbie Lawler. Oh. That's why we ask these questions, no. so we get that reaction. That's a tough one. That's really hard. I'm, mm. I'm going to go with 
the era that I feel most closely like I was a bigger fan of, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Miranda. Miranda. Oh, Jalen Tanner. Oh, here we go. That is a man. Tall I've seen dude. I seen him oh, at the PI. He is goodness. A big, <laughs> he, he's such a big. big is he the boy. tall? Other than man. I can't believe you used to make 155. Dude, by the way, Kiesa. I don't know what the heck goodness. I was thinking. I can't believe DC used to make 205. I can't either. That's a great point. As we look at the tarantula, he is long. Yes, very fun fighter. I love watching him fight. I've always been a fan of his ever since he was just gotten into the UFC. So mm -hmm. I think he's going to be definitely one of those That win's taking guys. a while. I just wonder if he's one of those guys that's so he's stubborn to go sweaty. up a weight class. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. I'm having success. I beat good guys at 55. He's over. For sure. He's oh, pounds. Oh, no. Yeah. Two pounds over. And you can tell he's still sweating. He's still sweating. Uh, that and he looks pretty he worked he out as long as too. He worked out as long as he could, and he's still two pounds How long over. do we have? Back to what you were saying, though. Uh, I hate to... You know, distract. I no, love go. the question, so I want to give an answer. No, go, go, please. To put some context to, like, the comeback stories between Brandon Moreno and Robbie Lawler. And I had no time to prepare. I was on a treadmill, and I just came out of a box. And yeah, I'm here yeah. at this By desk. the way, I'm going to need the backstory <laughs> on this box stuff. I got to go with Robbie Lawler because if you know all the layers to the story, he came from the Militage gym in an era where they sparred so hard, and he took a lot, a lot of fights in the gym, went all the way through his strike force career with no sparring. And then when he gets back to the UFC – the coaches American top team said, hey, if you really want to make a run at this, you got to start sparring again and you got to do things the way we deem fit for you. And it led to him winning the welterweight title and having one of the best runs, one of the most fan favorite runs of a champion. The Condit fight, the rematch with Rory McDonald, which led to him getting inducted in the Hall of Fame. Um, I know Moreno got cut, had to fight his way back and won a title and lived up to everything he said. But, man, I'm all about the golden era of MMA. I like Robbie Lawler. That's a tough I, I would have to say... Um... Robbie, because going into strike force and, and, and kind of taking these mm. fights where he, it was kind of like, he fought Melvin Manoff. Yeah. He was yeah. kind of like fighting he, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just kind of fighting and at, at 85. He started mm -hmm. in 99, fought. is that right? Yeah. He yeah. started his first fight well, in 2000, man. he said. He was 4-0 when he fought his first UFC fight against um, Aaron Riley. God. Yeah, this guy, this guy, Michael Kies, is a massive fan of the sport. You know that. But yeah. here, here's where I, I think I have to kind of differ with you guys. And I, I do respect Robbie Lawler, but... Dude, Brandon Moreno got cut. Yeah. He came back, and we cannot forget who Davidson Figueredo was when Brandon Moreno beat him. Yeah. Or even the got draw. a draw with him the first time, mm -hmm. right? They fought three weeks later. This is a guy that was just in a fight. Davidson Figueredo looked so good. They were like, yo, can you fight again? They fought three weeks later, and Brandon was a massive underdog. I don't know the number. Fights him to a draw, then comes out and wipes him out in there. <laughs> Rapid fire. I, okay. I actually have, can I say one more thing? You want a horn? Dang it, I can't. All right. We don't have time. Fact or fiction, Adesanya should be rooting for Drakus Duplessis. Fact. Fact. I think that that's a fun fight, and I think he likes that fight more than facing Robert Whitaker yet again, who is a, I mean, that's, that's a test, man. Fact. That's, Robert Whitaker's a tough out. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm, I think Drakus, I don't want to say easier, because I feel like that would be disrespectful, but. A lot more holes in Drakus' game compared to Robert. So, yeah, I think that Izzy's going to want Drakus to get the win. But he knows it as fact. Kamaro knows it as fact. I'll go fact. Yeah, you want a guy like Drakus. For I mean, a title Izzy defense, said absolutely. It. Izzy for, said it. For, for, so. Title defense. And it's, so it's just good. building the fight for sure. All right, we're going to put wish. a button on this game. We're going to thank Michael Chiesa, who cannot drink that beer because he is fighting Kevin Holland in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Let's go. Coming up on our next pay per view. I'll good be there, to see you guys. Friend. Always good to see you, champ. Yeah. Good to see you, double champ. Hey, and are you the you champ? You look I'm, at that. Well, Champs all around. Good guys, on. peace out. Thanks, Thanks, buddy. Yes, uh, no, there was it? no, I there wanna... was no secret story behind well, the, the magic. Uh -huh. right. I literally, sure. I teleported. And I don't know how to say it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go uh, rent-free moment for Robbie Lawler. It's his retirement fight. He's going into the Fight Wing Hall of Fame. One of the greats in the game, Kamaru. Let's start with you. A moment that you remember most about Robbie Lawler's career. Moment that I remember the most about Robbie is at the end of this round. I know a lot of people are making a lot about that spit. But it's what happens after the spit. Is as a as a, as a as a competitor, as a competitor, when you look at him, you stare at this opponent, and you let him know, hey, I'm ready to die in here. It's either you're gonna die first, or we're gonna die together. That moment right there is a moment that lives rent free because I've had a couple of similar moments, <laughs> and and that right there is, is truly what a champion is about when you're in their fight. 
All right, DC. I got I got this fighter interview one time. Robbie Lawler was doing an interview in the build to a fight, and they were asking him questions about what he fights for, what he wants, and Robbie Lawler just kind of stared into the camera and said, I don't fight just to win, I fight to take his soul. He was talking about, they asked him about Conor McGregor or something. Take a listen. Yes, he did. Uh, I wasn't too worried about it. Um, obviously, that was a big fight. He was a, uh, he's a big draw, but wouldn't have been good for him. How so? Um, because if I hurt him, I wasn't taking his neck. What were you going to take? His soul. That was, he would have crushed him? He would never have been able to return? We'll see. I'm, I'm a lot different than most people, and, uh, in what he way? He found a way out. He, was and, a chicken? And, and Diaz uh, took his neck and was nice to him. Wow. He, so he's soft? You calling him out? I'm just telling <laughs> it like it is and how I saw it. By the way, that was my man Zach Klein at WSB in Atlanta. Love that guy. All right, my moment. Lala and Rory McDonald, UFC 189 in 2015. Uh... McDonald busted up a little early. Rory got rocked by a head kick. And then, he, I mean, just spitting out blood, looking like a fire-breathing dragon at the end of the fourth. They were bloodied to a pulp. Lawler wins by TKO in the fifth, defending his welterweight title. That was freaking awesome. I mean, I think that we basically all have the same one. I mean, and how could you not? This was the moment that, in my mind, will forever define who uh, Robbie Lawler was, spit in the blood. But then I love this moment where he sits down and his corner asks him, like, you know, how you doing? How are things going? I hope they have the audio. He goes, I feel, I feel effing great. I feel, lip split, spit in blood, insane fight. They go to him in the court. He's like, "Yeah, I'm great. I'm great. I'm having fun." That's he. he that's a fun moment right there. It and is. I know that moment too well to him. When you're in that zone, he could have stood there the whole time, and just went into the next round because you're having so much fun at that moment. Speaking of having fun, this is about to be hot. <laughs> Oh, leave my Modelo. You can't have a drink. You really? can't have a drink for this next segment. Oh, so you guys oh, know our oh, producers no like. Water? Okay. Our, our producers like competition, so we have the competition of all competitions here. It's the Buffalo Wild Wings <laughs> Blazing Challenge. B Dubs has a brand new sauce, which is their hottest sauce on the menu, and it is appropriately called the Knockout Sauce, big fella. Oh my! All goodness. right. <laughs> here are the rules. We we all had to actually sign a waiver because yeah, the back. sauce is so oh hot. My gosh. We have to finish seven. Blazing knockout wings in three minutes or less. You have yeah. to remove all the meat oh. from the bone by using only your mouth. You can't pick it off with oh, your fingers. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. You can you you can hold it, but you can't pick it off with your fingers. Oh. No drinks of any kind. Wait. No bathroom breaks, Kamaru. Okay. <sighs> and no condiments. Other foods or sauces cannot be used. So are we just racing? So we yeah, can, it's a race. So we, can, we can hold the, we can hold the wing, but you we can just can't. Yeah, yeah, you just you, can't. You just can't pick I it up. I put off. my hair back. I'm ready. Okay. You, did you, okay, you got a little thing? All right. We're going to do three minutes. We're trying to get through seven wings. Here, guys, here for your I bonus. have to work after this. Does anybody else have to yeah, host yeah, yeah. Q&A with yeah, Dana? Hey, by the way, sign autographs? I got to sign autographs. I got to take pictures. I got one with a whole bunch of sauce. Every picture, you're just full of sweat. On three, two, one, go! Little fast on the draw with DC. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. And I want to see completely clean wings. No superfluous meat. You're a hard kill. Oh! You're good. <coughs> That's pretty you borderline, up? DC. You got to be careful. That's not even Make fun. sure you get all the meat off. That's not even fun. There's what? two types of people in this world. The people that leave meat on the bone, they're going to hell. Mm -hmm. People who eat all the meat. Mm. The dots at Laura. Laura. What? Laura. Wow. Look at that. Wrong That's wrong? a full bite of wing. Thank you. Mm. Mm. It's starting to get a little hot. Mm. Ooh, that is hot. Yeah. It's not that hot. It's just mm. I don't. Yeah. Can't, I can't eat enough. It's hard to chew. That's very. Yeah. Yeah. It's chew. Been sitting there for a minute. It's Probably big. Talk. Shocking. She's DC fit. with a <laughs> two-wing lead currently. <laughs> Color me shocked. Oh yeah. They are good though. This is hot. Well, I'm gonna start. This is gonna be really bad, buddy. Come on, come on. All right, guys. 
I feel a little bit. Um, wow. <laughs> Judging from recent experiences. Uh -oh. mm. hmm? What? Jalen yes. Turner, by the way, done cutting weight. I know how this is going to come out. So, um, <laughs> it's over. From recent, and I mean recent When you start burping, so. the older you get, it's not the in ah. that hurts. It's, it's the out. It's the out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, when you start burping, it's bad. this one? <clears throat> mm. uh, I'll I'm about to chop out. Laura and Kamaru still on all wing. I'm about to chop out. Helly's got kind of a lot of meat on his too, but DC's already on number four. Oh my God. But he's slowing down. It's hot. And I'm 90 seconds. That's no surprise to DC. Oh. Oh, no. I'm burping now, it's bad. Oh, Two bucks yeah. for Kamaru. This isn't hot to me, I just can't eat that much. I'm gonna lose because I can't eat that DC's much. wrapping Sorry. up his, well, he's got, he's got his done with, hey, I don't, no, 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 this no, Yeah, that's a team. Disqualified. Is that, is that like a one wing, half, half a wing penalty? That's okay. a DQ. Okay, you didn't take, eat it? All right, <sighs> technically he moved the ball. All right, three left for DC. <sighs> Helly's catching up. I'm good. Helly's in the rear view mirror. Yeah, we gotta tap out. I'm good. <sighs> Cause I know how the this gonna come out. The first time in his career, Kamara was gonna tap out. I know, I know how this gonna come out. <laughs> you already, you already pot committed. The clock's not even moving. Pun intended, mm. pot committed. Yeah, buddy. 45 seconds. I dealt I with that for no a whole hope. day. <laughs> I have no hope. Hopefully just two wings. I'm gonna let them do their thing. Wow, two man race. No. Two man race. DC with a stare well, down. Well, we had no water though. I'm dying, bro. If you're There's done, no. you can drink the milk. If you're done. No, I'm not doing, I can't drink the out. milk. Oh, water? I need water. Can I wipe my nose? Okay, well, you I'm may wipe your nose. My, my snot Water. dripping all over my wings. Ew. That's not good. Ew, it really is. Oh my God. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Yeah. What do you want me to do? I got you. My hands are cold. How much time left? How much time left? You, you know I'm water makes it cold, worse, right? Uh. Tomorrow? We don't have cold water, ice? 10 seconds. Go, Helly. Go, Helly. Go. Mm -hmm. Go. Ice, ice. Go. cold water? Mm -hmm. Eat the way. Oh, it's kind of creeping up on my lips. Three, two, one. And we've got a winner. And I can say, no cheating for the first time as, as really champion. Ah! Mm. That's really hot. Ah. It builds a lot. Mm. Milk's help. supposed to help, right? Milk's supposed to help, right? Mm. No. Mm -mm. That's my milk, man. Back up. Mm. Sorry, yeah. Mm. Oh, milk don't wow. help. All right, guys, as you recover, it's back yeah. to your seats, please. Oh. We have napkins, we have wipes, That's... we have milks. Where are the wipes? We don't have an EMT. Oh. That's so bad. Milk don't help. Why is it so much worse than cold. when I was actually eating it? Uh, by the way. It's so much worse now. By the way. Somebody you need to mic. gather yourselves because we are 10 minutes somebody away. Somebody close my mic. I need to blow my nose. From a power slap fight. There's 10 no minutes. Water. We have to announce it. We have to announce it. Oh my gosh. Can I wipe my tongue off with this? <laughs> oh. Oh let's God. uh, Why is let's send so this to an worse? interview with some of our slap contestants somebody here that are water, gonna be please. on the way-in show with Charlie Arnold. <sighs> Dan, thank you so much. Here with Nate Bernard, Stevie Ray Payne, our heavyweights, the first power slap match of the day and a debut for both of the men standing next to me. So guys, what's it like? How have you really let it sink in that here you are about to make your debuts in power slap during International Fight Week? Uh, for me, it's just, I couldn't have written a better story. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of martial arts. I compete in martial arts as a heavyweight and getting to just be here International Fight Week walking through the doors, seeing the stars that I look up to. And it's just a, it's a super humbling experience. And then to get to know, I get to be on the biggest stage um, and represent Power Slap is just a huge honor. And what a beautiful opportunity it is to represent uh, Power Slap, be able to represent my city, be able to uh, compete against great people and to be able to meet even more um, wonderful people that are uh, growing in this sport. We'll talk about meeting wonderful people. You guys are opponents here, but you have developed a sort of a friendship along the way. Talk to me about how that transpired. Uh, when we first found out that we were going against each other, um, he hit me up on Instagram and turns out he almost went to the same school that I did um, in college for football. And just from there, uh, we kind of kicked it off. And when we first met each other, we've been, we've been pretty cordial since then. But I know when it comes time to do it, we're both, it's game on. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was gonna ask that question next. You know, what's it like that you have that sort of relationship and it's not just two strangers going at it today? Uh, it's really cool. I think that we need that more in all sorts of combat sports. I think we need people who know that, hey, you can, you can sit here and you can be friends, you can collaborate, you can be like good people for the sport. But then as soon as you step on stage, it's all business and it's no holds barred, you know, 
I'm, I'm here to put him down and he's here to put me down. And that's what's so exciting about it because afterwards, you know, we're going to shake hands and we're going to be gentlemen and we're going to, you know, probably hang out and watch the rest of the fights at the pool later. Uh, so it's just one of those things, but I'm coming to knock him out and he's doing the same thing. Yeah, you heard him coming to knock you out. What do you say to that, Nate? That's no problem. I already know my mindset. I'm putting him down. I came all the way from New York. I mean, I'm, all my city is on my back. I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm putting him down. But on for your city. Guys, super excited to see what you're able to do. Best of luck and welcome to Power Slap. Dan, back to you. Charlie looks like a bag of Skittles. That's a great outfit. Oh, I like that. Very colorful. Um, we had a couple more segments. We're going to have to take a break. Because we're, I mean, like, we're just, we're struggling here. These uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, knockout hot wings are unbelievable. Yeah, Kamaro good. can barely smile. DC's chugging every kind of liquid. <laughs> we were going to play a game, but we're not going to be able to do it. But the good news is we have something for you. God Mackenzie damn. Pavlovich went with, <sighs> what's going on? You good? Oh. Is it, oh, what, are you, we're getting are you the, breathing um, through your nose, your I, mouth? What do you do? Yo, bring the, oh, the ice, straight. bring the ice, just, bring the I'll ice, bring the ice. my lips, so. Just bring the ice, please. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just ice. I just want fucking ice. Yeah, give me, give me. Just the ice. Oh my god. I mean, I'm, I'm good now. It, hop, know, they, it helps they slowly won. but surely. I'm just. Uh, good? Are you throwing up? Mission accomplished, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <laughs> we're we're gonna reposition because we have a slap fight coming up. Power slap three later today, live and free on Rumble. We have one of the matches coming up in just a couple of minutes. While we get repositioned for that in the uh, power slap area. We're gonna send it to Mackenzie Pavlovich, our special correspondent, who is with Israel Adesanya, getting a manicure and a pedicure. Check this out. Is this your first IFW not fighting on the card? I, I wanna say yes and no, but I fought on a tough finale with Tavares. I realized yesterday it's the second time, two years in a row, that the Anzacs have headlined, which I think is Pretty cool, but I'm gonna have fun and face up with whoever, Drakus, whoever in the cage. Just in the interest of keeping the flow of our wonderful conversation, yeah. what what's your prediction? If I'm a betting man, it's probably not who I'll put my money on, but I am a betting man and I'm betting more than money, so Drakus first round knockout, yeah. While we're on the topic of 290 and Rob and Andrikas, this is a big fight, but bigger than that, main event, Alexander Volkanovsky looking to unify the division. You and Volk share a really beautiful relationship from what we see. I imagine they spent a little bit of time here and there with him between Perth and now. What were some interesting notes about his own character development that I'm sure he underwent after that Islam loss? Staying true to who he is. Staying true to who he is as a champion, as a, as a, as a great, Staying true to himself. It's, 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 even, it's deeper than that. Uh, I don't know how to put it in words. As a fighter, I understand, I understand it because to lose like that on a stage like that when you felt like you won and get robbed of your moment and still hold your head high and not throw your toys, you know, sour puss, all that. Um, yeah, his character showed, his, his character showed, and the man that he is, past fighting showed. He's an inspirational dude, man. He's an inspirational dude. Like, every, just as a human being, but as a fighter, I look every time. It's like, just a homie, man. He's, uh, get homies that inspire you. Yeah, that actually inspire you to do better and be great. All right, well, we're going to get our nails finished, but you guys make sure that you don't miss UFC 290. Alexander Volkanovsky looking to unify the division against Yair Rodriguez. And, of course, Robert Whitaker, Drickus Duplessis, a huge fight with massive implications in the middleweight division. Possibly the next challenger for this man right here. Izzy, thanks so much Thank for your you. time. Oh, as always. <laughs> okay. In February of this year, Volkanovski aimed to capture the title one weight class above, right at home in Australia. The number one versus number two pound for pound fighters in the world. There is levels to this game, and Mahajev is the highest level that you can ever go up against. He knocks people out, and if he doesn't get the job done with the punches, then he'll just drag you to the floor, strangle you, rip your arms off, or make sure and take your bat. You know what he's gonna do, and you still can't stop him. This is a hard man to deal with, and he's a puzzle for the whole world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.
In my last fight, a lot of people thought I didn't stand a chance. They didn't think I was going to get outside the first round. They thought as soon as he grabs a hold of me, game over. This is a close, close fight. We haven't seen anybody challenge Machep, but now we're seeing it. I finished a lot stronger. And he hurts him, trying to steal the victory. You become a two-weight division champion. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the judges. Dude, I think he won that fight 3-2. Bro, Volk got it. Volk got it. Alexander Volkanovski, to me, won the fight 3-2. No, he did not win the fight. Alexander Volkanovski did amazing. At times, Makachev looked uncomfortable, but Islam won the fight. DC, stop it. Stop it, DC. What Volk did was something that no one expected him to be able to do. Tell me that's not ah. a win for Volkanovski regardless, that's especially the way he finished it. Looking at all the build-up to that fight, it was all negative. You know, nobody gave Alex a chance. What's going on, mate? From the beginning, it's always been that way. People just used Alex thinking, you know, he was a stepping stone. People just look past him, you know, he's not the biggest guy, but he just comes back time and time again. Let's go! Five seconds! On 30, we're gonna pick it up. I truly do believe in my skills and, and what I'm capable of. Harder! That's what I'm known for. That's it, keep it there, five! The fight IQ, the never die attitude. You know, all the right stuff. Stuff that's very, very hard to teach. Is that all you got, Billy? Come on! Might not have got my hand raised in the last one, fighting for that lightweight title, but just remember, I'm still the featherweight champ. Yair Rodriguez. Proudly repping Chihuahua, Mexico. Here is the number two ranked UFC featherweight contender, Yair Rodriguez. Back in 2014, Michael, he was 22 years of age when he debuted at UFC 180. This man is so much fun to watch. He is dynamic, he's explosive, and he can get the job done anywhere. I mean, the type of strikes that he throws, you just don't see them coming. The fight against the Korean Zombie, one second left, and he pulls out an elbow. The way that he throws his kicks, the way that he spins, and there's no one else like him. Nearly 10 years later, Gaia Rodriguez fight for a piece of the time. <laughs> First round, are you ready? Are you ready? Fight! Winner will get the featherweight champion, Alexander Volkanovsky, when he returns. Oh, crushing body kick for Rodriguez. Oh, Emmett clipped him with that right, though. And that's the thing, Emmett can just land one, and he's got you hurt. There's openings for Josh. You hold him! The power is on Josh Emmett's side, but the speed and variation. Oh, and he attacks the body again. It's all Yair. Yair's just ferocious. Every time he throws, it's been everything that he has. He rarely hits the same thing twice. Yair's constantly attacking. Switch me, Emmett somehow ate it. Fierralo, fierralo. On bar. And there's the triangle. That's it. My country means everything for me. En esta edición de campeones nos encontramos con Jair Rodríguez, actual campeón interino. Es una figura de inspiración para muchos y sobre todo mexicanos que son tangos con su gente. No necesitas resiliencia. En los primeros tres meses del 2023. Hubo tres campeones mexicanos, Brando Moreno, Jair Rodríguez y Alexa Grasso. Somos esta primera generación de 100% mexicanos que finalmente se ve como el sueño hecho realidad aquí. Representing your country, putting your flag out there, you're proud of doing that. Yo les quiero decir muchas gracias por ser un ejemplo y una motivación para todos los mexicanos y latinos en este deporte. ¡Viva México! 
just looking at my family and friends, you know, and seeing how happy they are about all the success that I have had in my career. It's amazing. And we are here at the Power Slap stage as promised. Nate Bernard, Stevie Ray Payne, the first ever live slap fight on the official UFC 290 way in chill. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. A couple of college football players, Nate Bernard and Stevie Ray Payne. Both these guys, big time athletes, shaped like martini glasses, heavyweights who are ready to wall roll. Let's send it to our power slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the Power Slap heavyweight division. Introducing to you first, in the blue corner, he stands six feet, three inches tall, weighing in at 249 and one half pounds. Out of Honolulu, Hawaii, Stevie Ray Payne. And now, Introducing in the red corner, he stands six feet, five inches tall, weighing in at 264 pounds. Out of Buffalo, New York, Nate, the Buffalo Soldier, Bernard. Let's go! And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Kerry Hatley. Woo! Winner of the coin toss and striking Let's first. Go! is Nate Bernard. All right, Nate Bernard, the Buffalo Soldier, currently working as a security guard for the Buffalo Bills, won the toss. He will strike first. Now, only 20% of these power slap fights have ended in the first round. Both of these guys, as I mentioned, former college football players. He played at Southwestern Oklahoma Center. State University, uh, D.C. My cousin played at Southwestern Oklahoma State University also. It's a Durant, Oklahoma very good Division II program. Great athlete right, straight Brandon's there. has won the toss. Hand and count. He's going to be slapping three. first. Right hand on three. He must measure. With the right hand. Measure. Here we go. One. All right. Two. Oh! oh my he just oh, oh, first oh, shot! Oh, my four, God! Four, five. Get, oh, six. Boy. Oh, he's not getting Seven. It. Stevie oh, he's, he's getting up. Come on, man. He's, he's getting up. Nine. He gets wow. Up. Getting up. Ten. Wow. He's good. He's up. Look at them. He's up. Oh, my face. goodness. Let's see what Kerry yeah. Hatley's going to say yeah. here. Come towards me a little bit. Okay, go this way. For Watch the edge. Watch he's the not okay. doing good. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Let's see if they're going to let him go here. That was a massive slap. That was huge. Oh, it's like a goodness. gunshot when you're here in person. These are actual athletes. These are, oh my goodness. What do you see, Kamaro? Uh, uh, oh! I mean, they're going to let him go? <laughs> well, you can't take another okay. slap. We're done. Fight's over. Wow. Yeah, no, that's it. wow, round one. one. Slap. One slap. A 20%, one and done. Like you said, 20% of these and the only strap. Here, brother. 20? Only 20%. Only 20%. Wait, that wait, is incredible. One in five, wait, and that Steve, was one of the five. Wait, 20? Are you sure it's not more like 80? No, it's really not. It's actually much closer than you would that imagine. The coin toss winners only win 53% of the time. TK. Incredible. But when you're talking about the big guys, the heavyweights and the super heavyweights, the coin slap is a little more important. <laughs> Man, that's what I tell you, dude. I, I got to be honest with you. If they didn't, if they yeah. didn't catch him... He was going to walk off the edge of the of, of the platform. He didn't know where he was. He was literally yeah, going no, a for a shot. nosedive. By the way, Stevie Ray Payne, who was the one who who was uh, almost slept, badass. Let's send it back to Justin Bernard for to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Kerry Hatley calls a stop to the match in round number one, declaring the winner by TKO Nate. The Buffalo Soldier, Bernard. Y'all should let me go up then. Oh, there we go. Charlie's talking to him. So let me go talk to him. <laughs> hey, here with the winner, Nate Bernard. I saw that smile on your face. You predicted a win, but how did it feel to do so in such emphatic fashion? Oh, it was just manifestation. I mean, I didn't even expect to be in power slap. I got called here. The next thing you know, I, I met him. It was good to go. I'm ready. I, oh, this is awesome, yo. Like, I've never been in Vegas. First time in Vegas. First time to do power slap, TKO right off the bat. Yeah, this is it's manifestation. 
All right, well, we got to look at it again because it was incredible. So take me through the finish. Uh, I mean, I was just practicing in the locker room, hitting the bag, just, oh, shit. Damn. <laughs> Big time. Damn. Nah, I was just practicing in the locker room, man. He was just hitting the bag with my coach, and he said, just go at it. So I gave it my all. I thought he was going to get back up. I ain't going to lie. So I'm excited, and this is awesome. So how has your life now changed in this very moment? I mean, this is just a great opportunity to help expand the Power Slap uh, community, continue to, you know, put the city on my back. Shout out to Buffalo to be able to, you know, create a name for myself in this, in this industry as a heavyweight contender, you know what I mean? So I'm excited for everything. Well, I think we're all excited to see what's next for you in the heavyweight division. Welcome to Power Slap. Now 1-0 and o is your record. Congratulations. Dan, back to you. My goodness, what a debut from Nate Bernard, the Buffalo Soldier, a former college football player, a defensive lineman at Southwestern Oklahoma State University, a uh, security guard in his spare time at a nightclub and with the Buffalo Bills and the Buffalo Soldier. Uh, he could quickly become uh, a guy who's climbing the ranks. It's going to be fun to watch. It's, only third, it's the third power slap event of all time coming up tonight, live and free on Rumble, 6 p.m. Pacific. Well, already a million followers on social media. People are tuned in to Power Slap. It's a, I mean, this was this was fun, right? I, six, I didn't know six million on six million, six million, six million yeah. on social media already, and it hasn't. I mean, I remember starting Power Slap last summer. That's not been a long time since this has existed, and to watch guys like Nate come out here and have a performance like that, tremendous. I. I didn't expect it to happen with one strike. I didn't either. I've never been to a power slap event, but I walked out here. There's there's some there's some real pageantry to this. And those yeah. guys, you know, you, you have an envision, right, of, of maybe what this roster looks like. Those are real athletes out there. And those dudes are I not didn't fat. know someone's face could move like that, Kamaru. <laughs> Good night. You you heard him. All he could say watching the replay was damn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He didn't even expect Damn. it. Yeah, well, yeah. I, well, and that's exactly what I was thinking, too. When I'm calling these fights with Bis Bisping, unlike Anik, who is finely tuned and has these great calls, I'm just yelling because it's so crazy. How can you not? Let's take a real-time look at what just went down with uh, Nate Bernard and Stevie Ray here a minute ago. Oh, oh God. Dude, it's the sound. The, the sound, sound of that. Sounds, yeah. It sounds like somebody shot a gun. Oh, oh. my gosh. That is, I mean, Nate looked mad too. Five, six. Yeah, um, the form, the form was pretty impressive. Like, guys, there's there's a lot of penalties that we see here. It's yeah, very early it. on in the sport. You can't step. You have to keep your feet planted. That's to make it safer. There's no clubbing, so you have to hit right in the strike zone. And for a guy, he didn't even pivot his for, feet. for his a guy who's great. just starting, it was yeah. great. It looked like you you want to turn your feet when you slap, because you're almost throwing a punch. But he did it the right way. Oh, here's a live look at the reactions. Uh-oh. Come on, come on, <laughs> come on. Like, I see this every Tuesday. I actually, I actually, I started to kind of cringe before it even happened, because you never know what's about to happen. But that sound is crazy. Oh, yeah. The sound that that made, his hand making contact with his opponent's face, there is no way you stay up to that. I don't care how good your chin I mean, is. He, he is a, what they say is a bouncer. A security a guard security for the guard. Buffalo yeah. Bills, right? Yeah. Can you imagine a rowdy one of them fan? Buffalo Bills players and get one of those yeah, slaps. Smack right upside your <laughs> face trying to touch Josh Allen. I like seeing somebody run up on Josh Allen. <laughs> Slap the shit, guard. Uh, uh, hey, hey, okay, you can say that. Sorry. By the way, I think Josh Allen probably feels pretty safe with yeah, well, Bernard. Yes. Hey, but look at his body and his physique, too. Yeah. Right, this dude's like in shape. Yeah, yeah, this shape. dude's like a, a defensive lineman. He, 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 was, uh, he was a very good uh, college football player. Speaking of very good, this isn't very good. This is a great card we have coming up, especially yes, yes. the main event, a title matchup at featherweight. Um, Alexander Volkanovsky and, and Yair Rodriguez. That is the fight around which this card was built. And it should be, it should be amazing. Uh, final comment in terms of uh, the card and this fight, this fight specifically. Just, I love seeing the featherweights get their opportunity, right? This is one of the greatest fighters in the world, and he's headlining one of the biggest fight cards of the entire year, and he deserves it. And Yair Rodriguez deserves to be in this position also, a guy that has worked his way up all the way from the ultimate fighter to becoming the interim champion, challenging 
one of the greatest fighters of all time. But this fight up and down the card is going to be tremendous. I cannot wait until tomorrow night. International Fight Week and, and the card that centers around International Fight Week is about moments. And we know that between Yair Rodriguez and Alexander Volkanovsky, we're going to have some moments. And not just in the fight, but the result of this fight. Because on one hand, Alex Volkanovsky is going to take one step closer to greatness, which he has already at, in my opinion. And then you've got Yair, Yair Rodriguez, who has the opportunity to bring home a third championship for Mexico, not to mention the co-main event. I mean, the stakes just could not be higher. Perfect fight card for International Fight Week. I'm going to piggyback off of that, Laura. Uh, uh, it's just, it's a, a tremendous weekend that you just feel in the air. You mm -hmm. feel it building. It, every, and now being around, it's getting closer and closer. You see the people all around the city. Feel it. It, you, you feel it. Yeah. It's building. And, and this is one of those incredible moments that I think is capped off with an incredible fight because each one holds very serious and tremendous implication for each guy. For Yair Rodriguez to go out there and do something like that. I Like we said earlier, he would be one of the biggest stars, Mexican Huge. stars in the world. And, and same with uh, Volkanovski. This is to further cement that legacy. We had a whole discussion about him being who was the best. Is he the greatest of all time? So um, I think there's huge implications in this fight, and it's all going to be a culmination of just the whole week and the buildup. The beauty in International Fight Week is it feels like throwback, right? For a while, while MMA wasn't as big as it is today, there was a very passionate fan base that would be at the hotel. They were always around, and you felt the big fight week. That's what you get this week Every single year, Las Vegas is on fire, and rightfully so, because we have two title fights at the top of the card. But we have a tremendous fight card from top to bottom at UFC 290. It's going to be sick. I can't wait. I can't wait either, and I just want to say thank you to Kamaru Usman. Thank I know you've yes. done some TV before, but your first time on the weigh-in show, good. you were spectacular, and I thank would you. like to thank you for helping me retain the belt. Um, because <laughs> no, I got the belt because I won the, the chicken wing eating contest. Oh, damn it. You're right. Yeah, I did. Damn. Yes, I did. My, enti my entire clothes <laughs> is not working now. Are you, how are the, how's the mouth doing? Dude, how I've are you guys doing? Cups, I've got cold water and ice. I, have I, to, I stopped early because, like I said, you know, now at 36, it comes out different than it goes I'm afraid of what's in. about so, to happen. Yeah. It, it, so we got long so day today. Here's the crazy yeah. thing is Kamaru has to do this. Again tomorrow against Cheeto Vera, the Buffalo Wild Wings knockout hot sauce. You have, you to have do to it again. Ten wings in five oh minutes. Oh my goodness! You're gonna have tears rolling down your face, bro. You had one today. I might be. No, I had two today. But here's the problem, though. You, but that's kind of cheating. Little warm up. A little warm up. Yes, you got to be, train. Hey, Cheeto didn't. Hey, what you mean? Cheeto he, didn't get wings today. How you know? How do you know? He's known about this. He's probably been home pr practicing, training. I gotta be honest. Like I like the flavor. I'm a, I'm a spicy guy to begin with. Yeah. But, but it just good. gets really bad it when just you get deep into it. The over chicken time. itself is delicious. Though. It's when you're done, though. Like, when you're done, it was a nightmare. I mean, Laura, you're over the thing throwing up. I, I mean, <laughs> Kamaru there's, Usman. There's, it. There's, it, there's certain things that just, and, and that's all. We, we've both we've do, both done hot ones. There's just certain things about some of those wings. It's just unnecessary. Yeah, it's too much. You know, I like it. It's good. Too much. But it's unnecessary with that heat. My it's brother. I made the mistake drinking the milk. Oh, I drank I the, the milk. It curdled, the milk. The milk no, it help. curdled it in stomach my hurt. stomach. Yeah. You were right. And it did a weird thing. Hey, bro, you know what's crazy? My brother-in-law used to eat those wings normal. That was his meal when he'd go to Buffalo Wild Wings. No. Mm. Guys, Great. it has been fun. International Fight Week is here. It's in full effect. Ceremonial weigh-ins coming up tonight at 7 Eastern. Power Slap 3 at 9 Eastern. Live and free on Rumble. Kamaru. Sanko, DC, always having a good time, even if a DC snotted all over the stage. And a special <laughs> guest appearance from Michael Chiesa. How much fun was that? Uh, and thank you to Buffalo Wild Wings for burning our faces off. I'm a master at eating wings, though. Look at that. I just rotate the wing. I put my teeth in the wing, and I just <laughs> rotate it back. <laughs> you saw that? I took all that wing down in one bite. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> UFC 290 Volkanovski versus Rodriguez coming up on Saturday night. Oh. If you haven't ordered, get ready to do so. They slap Volk tonight, too. In Rodriguez, Moreno, Pantoja, and yeah, power slap. Yeah, you want to slap tonight, right? The power slap tonight. If you saw that, you should be wanting to tune in tonight Absolutely. to Rumble. Absolutely. That was free, free. baby. Six o'clock Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern.
My hometown has uh, definitely shaped me to who I am today. There's so many situations where I've been undersized, didn't stand a chance. I believed in myself. I did that back when I was playing rugby league. I was the smallest guy on the field playing the, the biggest position. I was a big underdog and people thought I didn't stand a chance. The bravery, the commitment, you know, the work ethic. I've been doing that my whole life. Again, I've always been undersized. I love being in them positions because I love uh, being able to really show myself and show, show people what I'm capable of.